Hello, everybody. I'm just about ready to get started. Mmm. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to prepare myself mentally for uh, these next few cases. Mmm. There's a lot to talk about, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. But I will say we're going to be introduced, I believe, to a new prosecutor in this episode. So have fun looking forward to that. Just thinking about how to voice said character. I think I got some idea with her. I'm not sure about the other characters. We'll kind of play it as we go. See how we feel. In terms of achievements, there's only one that I could see for this upcoming case. No, it's somebody you've never seen before. So that's all I know about the upcoming case. <laughs> the rest is going off of pure memory, which will be very interesting. But anyway, Chad, let's go ahead and get started. Let's pause the Justice for All soundtrack. And yeah. Let's see how Phoenix basically fails yet another case. Question mark? I'm gonna go with question mark. I think he had like one case he sort of did on his own without getting an assistant, sort of. One day, chat. My dream was one day we'll have a case where we are not handheld. But we'll see where it goes. I doubt that'll happen this game. But anyway, let's go ahead and do the uh, widescreen so chat can see everything. Oh, it's Reunion, comma, and Turnabout. I'll have to fix that in post. I guess I can fix the stream now. I did not see the comma until just now. Oh well, I tried. Let's proceed. They are something. It was no accident. I was drugged. Sleeping pills. I was murdered. By that person. That's why I took... My revenge. It's only fair, isn't it? Any? Finally got to see you again and... It's not your fault. You didn't do it. No, I... I did it. I killed that person. But that wasn't you. Doesn't matter. It might as well have been me. Oh well, let's let, let her go to jail. I can't believe something like this happened. You're telling me we're supposed to believe this is all real. The events of that gloomy, rainy afternoon that started this whole mess. Keep playing through my mind. June 16, 3.34 p.m. Right in company law offices, where Phoenix had, like, four cases so far. What depressing rain. Do you understand how depressed that makes me? Do you? Uh, I guess. But actually, more than being depressed, I'm angry. Angry at that weather girl on TV. I think our little rainy spell will take a break with the day of sun. It's what that girl said. I'd stake my life on it. Well, it's the weather. That's why I didn't bother to bring an umbrella today. What nerve calling herself a weather girl. She's gonna hear about my $1,500 suit. Um, about your case. Unless you're planning on suing the weather girl. I'm sorry. I thought but before we got to down to business. To defeat the Huns, of course, chat. We could have friendly chatter. My name is Dr. Turner Gray. I'm a surgeon. As in, like, turning gray, because half his hair is white. Is that the is that the pun? Remind me to never end up under his knife. 
I'm here today because of this incident. Oh no, not the blurry newspaper times. I have one of those too. Now practice at Grace Surgical Clinic. Fourteen impatients lose their lives. Oh, you're the doctor at... It's really quite upsetting. Did you hear me? Upsetting! Yes, yes, I heard you. I agree, it's quite upsetting, Dr. Gray. The one that screwed up was the nurse. It was her that got the medications mixed up and killed those 14 patients. <laughs> wait, wait, no, that actually happened? Wait. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Holy. Chan saying, can we sue for psychological damage? Maybe. And yet, now listen good, and yet, that nurse had the nerve to go and die before admitting to her wrongdoing. <laughs> there you go. She didn't even offer any sort of explanation to me. And this is the kicker. She up, and, she up and has herself a grand old accident and crashes her car. Smash crunch, instantly transforming her car into an accordion model. Yeah, how dare she die, chat. That's right. About a year ago, all the tabloid shows were talking about it. 14 victims of medical malpractice and the nurse's mysterious fatal accident. There were rumors that Dr. Cray had actually caused that crash. People said it was to forever hide the person responsible for the malpractice incident. Why would I? Now I'm just gonna say this once. Why on earth would I want to kill that nurse? She's the one who killed those 14 patients, not me! I think you need to take a deep breath, Doctor. And focus. More to the point, this case is over a year old. Why bring it up now? That's simple, because the situation is slipping out of my grasp. This just won't do. My clinic isn't seeing nearly as many patients nowadays. Do <laughs> you think? <laughs> right, Chad G. Gee, I wonder why they're not coming. Do you understand what that means? It means they're not coming to my clinic. You don't say. If it were me, I don't think I'd want to go there either, thinks Phoenix. So... What would you like me to do about it? I want you to help me prove I'm innocent. Why did he have like the evil cackle hands for a second there? Um, you do realize I'm a lawyer, not a private investigator, right? Oh my gosh, Phoenix realizing he shouldn't be the detective despite everything that happened in the first game. No, this is something only you can do. Huh? My F.A. You know this girl, correct? Dot 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 exclamation mark. <gasps> yes, chat. Maya, why would he know her name? I heard you were working under her for a little while. Well, yes, I mean... Hey, wait a second here. I worked under her? Yes, am I wrong? She told me, so I'm not quite sure if... Well, we worked a few trials together. She went back to her hometown to undergo more, more training. Ah, oh, yes. Look at that face he makes, chat. I wish I could pause right as he does that. Actually, can I? No, it won't let me. It must be lonely for you. What? Wait, I I'm not. She must be an extraordinary girl to handle such rigid training. Huh? I have an acquaintance who knows a lot about these mystical sorts of things. She's the one who introduced me to Miss Fay. Is Maya really that famous? Thanks, Phoenix. I've already set up an appointment. For what? What else? A channeling! I'm going to have her call the spirit of the nurse that went and got herself killed. Uh, oh. Maya, I wonder what she's up to right now. We, the women of the Fae Clan, have always been spirit mediums. It's because the power to communicate with spirits flows strongly through us. That's what she told me. I guess she's learned to accept her responsibilities and become an adult. It's Maya. She's never going to become an adult. Not counting training. This will be her first time channeling a spirit. She gave me one condition before accepting my request. A condition? The condition is you, Mr. Wright. She said she wouldn't do the channeling without first seeing you again. Me? And that is why I searched you out. You want to see her too, don't you? And so, 
That is how I ended up visiting Maya's hometown with the doctor. June 19th, 1.25 p.m. Rain Village. So this is Crane Village, Maya's hometown. Definitely still in the United States. Definitely not Japan. Oh no, chat. This character is one of my least favorite characters in the game. <laughs> I really, really, really don't like this character. Can we just call her Five Head? Can we just call her Five Head, chat? Let's be real. She is like... 50 to 55 percent forehead i mean look at where her eyes are compared to her ears that ratio does not make sense <laughs> even graphically this character annoys me <laughs> it's like it, it feels like where her bangs and eyebrows were like you should have drawn her hair over it it would have been kind of like a small face but they they took like the stretch tool and they doubled it tight for some reason anyway Anytime they call this character by her name, I'm calling her Five Head Chat. I really don't like this character. And you'll understand why in a little bit, I'm sure. Why, hello there. She dot dot dots us. Hmm. What an odd little girl. You're telling me those are not human proportions. Hey, wait up, Pearly. Hmm. Someone else is coming this way. Nick! M Maya, how are you? It's good to see you again. No, it's not. I actually was having more fun when you when you weren't there, but I'm going to be real with you. I actually liked our other partner more. Wow, I didn't think you'd really show up. I didn't either. I didn't either. It's not that big a deal. You made it sound like you were so far away. I mean, if we look at the background of this very normal U.S. village. Well, maybe I exaggerated just a little. It was only two hours by train. Oh, oh, he went there by train? Yeah, it's definitely not the U.S. If I'd known you were this close, I'd have visited more. No, you're not allowed. I already decided, you know. Until I become an adult, I have to work hard and be strong by myself. Oh. Well... Anyway, congratulations. Glad your training is going well for you. Heh <laughs> heh I guess we'll examine. Not that this is needed to advance the plot. Giant rock that seems to be reaching for the sky. Its origins are written on a beat-up old sign. Looks like this giant rock is called the Korean Boulder. Really complex explanation written here, but long story short. The big stone for spirits to live in. Something like that. Old bus stop. It says Korean Village on the signpost. Must have seemed incredibly inconvenient since they only come three times a day. Okay, that seems more like the US. An old-style phone booth. Can't say it really fits this area too well. Cell phone doesn't get reception up here, so who knows? I may need it later. <laughs> Chat, cough, cough, wink, no reception. I'm sure that won't be important later. The biggest, most elegant of the buildings I could see from here. This is Faye Manor, the place Maya calls home. It's easy to be overwhelmed by its presence. Rustic, thatch roof houses, where the other villagers live, line the street. Yeah, I... Yeah, oh, oh yeah, sure, this is the US. They're nowhere near as large or as nice as the manor in front of me. Kind of odd that I don't see any of the other villagers walking around, though. Oh, Phoenix with almost fourth wall humor. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're presenting the badge. It's good to see this tarnished badge again. What do you mean by tarnished? Well, look, this badge is like every other. It's bound to lose its color and shine after years and years. But you know, polishing it up once in a while wouldn't be a bad idea. He got called out, chat. Oops, I accidentally presented it again. Let's talk. Today's channeling. Looks like you finally become a full-fledged medium, taking on your first job. Yeah, I didn't think it would be this soon. But this case. Do you know the messy story behind it? <laughs> Behold, the power of the Maya Intelligence Network. Yeah, I don't think she has any intelligence. Let's see. 14 people died because of malpractice on Dr. Gray's part, right? And to pin the blame on the nurse, he killed her in what appeared to be a car accident. Huh? Um, so what is this Maya Intelligence Network, anyway? The tabloids. That's what I thought. <laughs> I'm just pulling your leg, Nick. What really happened is the exact opposite. Heard all about it from Dr. Gray. 
<laughs> my intelligence not work? Exactly. Nice one, chat. Oh, come on, Nick. You wouldn't take a crazed killer as a client. I wonder how well that sentence is going to age. That's too scary, even for me. Yeah, I guess so. Let's go to Crane Village is the next topic. So, this is your hometown, huh, Maya? Yup. Crane Village. I've heard people call this place Medium Valley, too. Interesting. Everyone that lives here is a spirit medium. Pretty much. Most of my ancestors were, were too, I think. That's probably true, since the Fey ability to communicate with the dead is so strong. I love how we just 100% this is just straight true facts in this universe. I love it. Actually, only the women in this village are mediums. So what do the men do? They usually work someplace outside the village. The girl earlier. Oh yeah, let me ask you about the girl I saw earlier. Do you know her? Oh, you mean Pearly? Pearly? Pearl Faye. She's my cousin. I, I mean, like, it, just the proportions annoy me every time I look at her chat. I can't unsee the forehead. Isn't she adorable? No, Maya. No, she's not. Just like yours truly. No, Maya, your face proportions are correct. Hers are not. Cousin? Wait, that means... Is she also a... Yup, she's a medium too. Pearly's a real genius when it comes to channeling. Hmm, I see. Hope I didn't scare her when I tried to talk to her earlier. Nah, it's not you. My aunt drilled into her head that if a suspicious looking person tries to talk to you, run away. It's true, we are very suspicious looking. Suspicious looking? Well, you're not wearing training clothing, for starters. Of course not. Pearly's my aunt's most valued treasure, so she's not allowed to go outside of town. She doesn't know much about the world outside of Crane Village. Aunt? Pearly's mother is my aunt, duh. Come on, Nick. Well, Nick, gotta get going. It's about time for the channeling to start. Huh? Oh, yeah. I'm doing the channeling in my house, so come on in, okay? After I'm done, grow up some juicy burgers. All right. Good luck, Maya. Thanks! Well, at least she's still the same perky Maya. Meditation room chat. June 19th, Fame Manor, meditation room. Ah, Mr. Wright, I'm so glad you showed. It's a nice weather we're having today. Aren't you happy? No, not at all. That stupid weather girl made the wrong call again. It will rain cats and dogs today, she said with a straight face. I can't believe they allow such misguided reports on the public airwaves. Looks like talking about the weather with this guy is just asking for punishment. But anyway, this is a splendid manner. Okay, him constantly touching his glasses kind of bothers me too, I'm not gonna lie. No argument there. It's hard to believe that this is Maya's house though. Ah, uh, oh, Chad, I would just like to point out the, the very, the very American language on the walls behind them there. I mean, can't you read what's back there, Chad? I mean, it, it's not, uh, <laughs> it's not UK English, so, you know, some people might be confused, but clearly, clearly everything on the walls is, uh, <laughs> it's also in English. Although I do like the words meditation room on one side, followed by literally. The wall of foreign text on the other. 10 out of 10, chat. They really cared. I was given a guide map to this building. Yeah, you're right. It's it's Washington, D.C. You can tell by the uh, traffic and um, the mountain. <laughs> you don't use those letters in Australian English? Exactly. Here, Mr. Wright. I have a copy for you, too. Guide map of Fay Manor. A diagram of Fay Manor has been added to the court record. Well... Let's examine the very, very much English text back here. Someone with a lot of skill wrote these four Chinese characters with a brush. Oh, we're acknowledging it's a different language. <laughs> okay. Listen, chat. Sometimes they just forget. Let's be real. Sometimes they just forget to swap it out. You gotta call it out when you see it. Oh, look. Here's a translation. Once in a lifetime. Messages. People should value their ghostly meetings as once in a chance lifetimes. 
The door that leads to the channeling chamber, the place where spirits and people meet. The iron in this door was tempered, making it very solid. Looks like this is a strong lock on this door to top it off. Piece of cloth with a ton of finely written characters jammed onto it. Probably esoteric knowledge only mediums would know. Hmm, let's see. Here's one in English. It says, 100 ways to save money. Yeah, that, see, that's not in English. See, that's all I'm talking about. They're gonna pretend that this one is in English. Like, nah, no it's not. Being a medium sounds like a rough way of life. The store leads out to the winding way. The weather outside looks really nice. I think that's all we can examine for now. Hold on, chat. We gotta present our badge. Look, here's my attorney's badge. Are you trying to compete with me and my profession with that piece of scrap? Uh... Miss Surgeon, by the lawyers, I'm practically a saint. Yes, well, I don't exactly have any patience right now. But it, but, and listen good, I'm not the one that made the mistake. This doctor needs his head examined. And let's talk to the doctor about today's channeling. What are you gonna do once the nurse's spirit has been called? Isn't it obvious? I have her write a signed confession. A signed confession? Yes. A confession. Pay attention. I'll have her write this. One year ago, on May 2nd, 14 patients died due to my negligence. And then, on May 24th, I fell asleep at the wheel and died to a, in a car accident due to my further negligence. I mean, it could be the Terrace Pharma. She is channeling something. I'm sorry, and I apologize for being negligent. Wow, the word negligence was used multiple times in that one apology. That's what I'll have her write. The confession, the rain falling on my soul, can finally stop. Uh oh I see. Let's talk about Maya. So, how did you hear about Maya Fay? I heard about her from an acquaintance. Girl studying the occult at the college. That girl introduced me to this village. This is the home of Crane's School of Channeling. The home, huh? Miss Maya is a daughter of the Master, I hear. Master? Anyway, do you see that door? It's the room where people and spirits meet. Miss Maya's aunt is in there right now. Do you care to meet her? Um, can we move to the door? I guess I'll go to the channeling chamber. June 19th, Fay Manor Channeling Chamber. Wow, it's such a strange atmosphere in here. It's almost like we're not in the US. These flickering lights, I guess they're candles. Good sir, who might you be? Ah, uh, I'm, uh, my name is Phoenix Wright. Oh, you must be that good sir. Good sir. Is she talking about me? You are a lawyer. Are you not, good sir? I have heard much about you from Mystic Maya. Is that so? Mystic Maya? I am Mystic Maya's aunt, Morgan Fay. As in, like, Morgan Le Fay, I guess? N nice to meet you. Ah. Uh, I'd wanted to speak with you about a certain incident, good sir. It would seem that perhaps you asked too much of Mystic Maya in performing your duties. Most unbecoming, I'm afraid. Chat loves the hair. It's like she's got like a dumpling hair. I, how else would you describe that? It's very odd. It seems like pillowy, but also lumpy. It's very strange. Huh? Don't tell me you've already forgotten. That was it, not for... Oh, excuse me, let me try this again. That was... It not for Mystic Maya and her assistance, you would surely not have won. Does she mean if not? I'm pretty sure she means that that was if not for Mystic Maya and her assistance. I'm pretty sure that's a typo. I'm like, that sentence I don't think made sense the way it was written. So anyway, let's try this one more time. That was if not for Mystic Maya and her assistance, you would surely not have won. First, a girl that runs away. 
Now an old lady who says I stink at doing my job. I mean, Phoenix, she's kind of right. You do kind of suck at your job. Like, we got bailed out of at least three cases 100% due to spirit medium intervention. When did I become the poster boy for how not to make a first impression? Uh, Phoenix, did you look in the mirror? The past is the past, though. Let us speak of the present now. Ah, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, let's examine the room before we go further. This folding screen is really showing its age. All of its edges are a bit tattered. Thundering is faded, too. I think I recognize a few of the characters on here. Ooh, rain. Pretty sure that's what it says. We will ask Maya about it later. Guess this is an altar. Whatever it is, it feels important. Air like object with a cloudy reflective surface. Some branches of a sacred tree have been set in a predetermined arrangement. Good sir, I wonder if you would please not touch the sacred objects. Those objects are being offered to the spirits. If you were to touch them, good sir, they would become cursed. Yes, cursed. She really didn't have to talk down to me. I'm not that much of an idiot. <laughs> Chad, I think this is where we hit the doubt button. Uh, we don't have anything to s Oh, we could say something about the floor. This is where the medium sits, I assume. There are four panels of this flooring. The straw on the floor feels a little damp, probably from the humidity in the air. Meditation is room is on the other side of this very heavy-looking door. There's a giant iron lock where the handle is. Feels like a curtain that would separate the normal from the spirit one. There we go. We got the curtain between worlds. Uh, I don't think there's anything else for me to examine. But we'll take a look at the guide map. So, chat, this may or may not be important to know the layout of the place. If you can't see the thing in the upper right where chat is, it just says the word side room. But basically, meditation room goes up into channeling room. To the right is the winding way, which is like an L-shaped corridor. And at the top of the L is the side room. And there seems to be no connecting pieces between them. Well, let's remember that for later. For now, let's go back here and I guess chat to her. Let's present our badge, because we can. Good sir! Ooh, she got the demon face on. Pure white eyes as she stares at us. Ah! We would like to begin the channeling at 3 o'clock. You don't mind, good sir. Do you mind allowing me to make preparations? Uh, um, sure. Go ahead. She's a fae, all right. Just as odd as the rest. Ask about Maya. So why did you add Mystic to Maya's name? Isn't that a little... strange? Good sir. Yes. How dare you be so rude and disrespectful toward Mystic Maya. Uh, I'm sorry. She must be addressed by her proper title, good sir. You must call her Mystic Maya. Um, uh, so, uh, about Mystic Maya, uh... It is the blood. <laughs> Words you don't want to hear from other people. Excuse me? Blood? Mystic Maya carries the blood of the Master. In actuality, she is the only one remaining. Only one remaining? What's that supposed to mean? Mystic Maya is the last of the rightful heirs of the Crane Channeling Technique. Okay. Then, where do you stand? That is a little more complicated. Uh-oh, she looks down after that. Although a woman of the Fey Clan, I'm merely a member of the Branched family. Oh, now they're talking about branches? Oh my gosh. Tap, these are... <laughs> these are not things that you say in the US, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just gonna say in terms of location, location check or culture check, big F on this episode. Branch family? What's that? It is as it sounds. For a member of the Branch family, no matter her spiritual power, she can never become the master of the Crane School. So, how strong are you? It is a shame. However, I will admit, I cannot even begin to compare to the lowliness of my power to the Masters. 
So that's how it is. Let's ask about today's channeling. Today's channeling will be her first. Yes, good sir. Because the spirit of a person who dies in a traffic accident is usually very strong. It's usually easier to call that person to our world. Traffic accident, indeed. The channeling will take place here, in this channeling chamber, good sir. As you can see, I'm in the process of preparing. In the process of chugging out of that mug constantly. Let's ask about the channeling chamber. So, this room is the... Channeling chamber? Yes, Phoenix. Yes. The place where a spirit medium speaks with those who have departed. I don't suppose you'd mind if we observed the session. You know she's going to say absolutely not. Come on, Phoenix. Do not even think of such nonsense. Only the medium and the client might enter here. Uh oh The secrets of the crane techniques cannot be seen by just anybody. Never stop Maya from doing it in front of me before. It's also for your safety, good sir. If something were to go wrong... Gee, chat, how ominous. That is why, while channeling is being performed, that heavy door is securely locked. And we are definitely not trying to set up for a locked room murder. Definitely not, chat. We would never set up that kind of mystery. Oh, that's what the lock is for. Oh, yes. I wonder if you have yet to meet Pearl, good sir. Pearl? She's an adorable, angelic young girl. Why do we- why did we say Pearl with a question mark? Are we having, like... <laughs> are we having Blue Donna, like, <laughs> memory blanks? We just had a conversation about Pearl. How do we not know about Pearl? <laughs> huh, indeed. Oh, that odd. She is my daughter. Now then, what was it you were about to say? <laughs> Amnesia works quickly. I like to think it's all the candles in the air. It sucked all the oxygen out of the room, and our brain just turned off. I'm pretty sure, chat. 10 out of 10, that's exactly what happened. Oh, what a cute daughter you have. <laughs> a pure heart that knows not of the evils in this world is a powerful thing, good sir. Please refrain from affiliating with her, I request. Oof. Well... Not like I had the chance to anyway. I must insist and stress that you not let it occur. Did I did I lose did I lose the bad character? Uh no. We haven't seen one of the many things that upsets me in this game. We're not there yet, but we're getting there. Okay, okay, I get it. So let's move on. Welcome, Flitchard. Hope you're doing well. Morgan Fay is creepy as her hair is big. I like the whole covering her mouth as she speaks thing. Anyway, back to the meditation room. Go down the winding way. Oh, that urn is thoroughly destroyed in the background chat. Wow, this garden is really breathtaking. Someone put a lot of love into it. What is that over there? Is that an incinerator? Looks a little out of place in a garden like this. Well, nice try, game. I'm gonna look at the urn first. It's a really old urn. The ashes of a person long dead are inside. It's like something with a long history. Other than that, it's not very interesting, so time to move on. I'm not gonna comment about the millions of cracks in it? Okay. Looks like there's a room over here, too. A peaceful feeling is emanating from it. Fine, I'll look at the incinerator. It's a small incinerator. I don't think garbage trucks come all the way out here into tiny villages like this. Every family has to burn their own trash. Oh, well, yes, just very much US here, chat. It's been a garden with a small lamp and traditional decorations. It's a bit small to walk around in. Ah, oh, yes, the traditional the traditional gardens with the bamboo shoots and whatever you call... What What is that thing called with the bamboo where the water falls into it and then it like slaps down and drops the water in? Is there a specific term for it? Is that literally just called like a bamboo fountain? I've seen it in a couple places. I'm sure it has a more unique name than that. Although that incinerator piques my curiosity. As it looks like we're seeing the other end of it where water would gradually pour in and it would make the thunk thunk sounds. But oh well. Uh, Let's go to the side room. 
June 19th, Fame Banner, side room. So this is the side room. Looks more of a break room. <laughs> I mean, like, chat, come on. Like, just look at this room. Like, this is what I'm talking about. Like, you know, you, you can kind of stretch your imagination a little bit for the first game that this is allegedly in the US. And then you look at a room like this and you're like, come on. Come on, Phoenix Wright. I'm supposed to believe this is in the US? With the, uh, the little mattresses on the floor like that. The basically tatami mat style flooring. <laughs> the, the, the flower <laughs> painting in the background. Little plant in front of it on its own little altar. It's obviously Texas. You're right. You're right, Chad. I'm sorry. There's bedding spread out on the floor. It's like someone's sleeping in one. I shouldn't disturb them. Spending spread out on the floor. Someone's sleeping in that one over there. She's probably in an exhausted medium taking a break and catching some Z's. If I wake her up, she might be grumpy and throw a spell on me. Probably a good idea not to disturb her sleep. It's a decorative wooden bear sculpture. Oh, it's a bear with a fish in its mouth. I couldn't tell what that was right away, and now that they said it, it clicked. I, I looked at it, and it was like my brain did not want to interpret whatever was in the corner of that room. There's the plate attached to the base. Rain Village, the heart of channeling. What the? It's a souvenir. So does this mean it's easy to spot any bears here? And for them to spot you? Ugh. It's a small alcove. No idea what it's supposed to mean or symbolize. If I had one of these in the office, it would end up as storage space. But here, it's decorated with some pretty flowers and a beautiful hanging scroll. Okay, we acknowledge the hanging scroll, at least. This is the first time I've seen a sliding door like this in person. But <laughs> gee, I wonder why. From here, I could see the winding way in the little garden in the courtyard. Alright, so it doesn't look like there's anything else to do. Let's attempt to leave. Hey you, hold on now. Scout's got a few questions to ask. Hmm. Sure I've heard that southern accent somewhere before. Wow, I totally guessed who it was based off of that text. Damn, I'm good, chat. Damn, I'm good. Well, chat, hope you enjoy reoccurring returning characters. Oh, well, I'll be. It's Mr. Phoenix Ride. How you been? Haven't seen you in what? A year? Um... You are, uh... Okay, so for the achievement, I knew she would show up eventually. I gotta call her Lotta Hair. Let's go for the achievement chat. It's obviously Lotta Heart, although Who Are You Again is very funny. We're gonna call her Lotta Hair. Um, Lotta Hair, was it? Lotta Who? Wait, you best not be making fun of my hair now. Uh, uh no, um, I, I wasn't making fun. I, I was complimenting you on your fine hair. Hmm. I dare say you're one heartless man, Mr. Wright. It was cause of my testimony that your friend got out of being guilty. It looks like you already forgot that. Hold up. You were working with the prosecution at the first... Oh, at first as one of their witnesses. And came after us as if we were a piece of sirloin steak. Minor detail. Stop being so uptight. Letting little things get in the way. How's that mouth fit on her face? We have similar questions for Pearl. The name's hard. Lot of hard. Don't you f go forgetting it. Oh yeah, that's it. Now listen here. I'm here to take some pictures today. Gonna get myself a real scoop. Ah, so I guess you're still at it. Being a photographer, I mean. You betcha. Hardest working one out there, I reckon. Didn't I say I was gonna make myself... Gonna make a name for myself as a famous paranormal photographer at least they kind of follow through with her story arc i guess oh that's right this ain't no time to be wasting time the channeling's about to get started is it that time already we all should hurry up and get to the meditation room what are you waiting around for come on a lot of heart huh i've been judging her harshly because of that case but, I guess looking back, we had some good times, too. No, we didn't. <laughs> right, Chad? Right, wait, no, we didn't. Dear 19th, Fame Manor, Meditation Room. We will now begin the channeling. 
Mystic Maya, an honored guest. Please proceed into the channeling chamber. With this, I can finally swat all those pesky flies once and for all. You hear me? They won't be able to say a single bad thing about me after this. You would love to hear them apologize, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you, Mr. Wright? Me? Oh, yeah. I sure would. Galvishim, <laughs> something not saying nothing is normal in the Phoenix Wright world. That's very true. Mystic Maya, do you have the channeling chamber key? Yup, right here. That is most satisfactory. That key is one of a kind, so please take good care of it. And definitely, chat, <laughs> th this will definitely not be an important detail in the near future. It'll be fine, Aunt Morgan. I won't lose it, trust me. Okay, Dr. Gray, let's get started. Finally, let's go! Click chat. Now, let us wait patiently out here for them. Please have some lovely bitter green tea and jaw-droppingly large strawberry desserts. Hold on now, Granny. Granny? How can we in allowed in that room? Dear madam, you have an impressive grasp of English. From where did you learn it? What? I'm from the heart of the heartland. Is that so? Then I humbly request that you return to this heart of the heartland. Oof. Oof. Green tea, the most American of beverages. You're right. W what are you? This is Karain Village. You cannot follow our traditions and rules. We request that you leave. Dot 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 exclamation mark chat. Look at that mouth. Look at Lada's mouth. A lot of hair, a lot of mouth, a lot of attitude. Sorry. Wow. She shut Lotta up. Now that's impressive. Now then, let us wait. Uh-oh, chat. Red text bang. Hey now, what, what was that just now? It came from inside the channeling chamber. Another bang, chat. Hey, that that's a gunshot. Excuse me? I heard that sound before. It's a gunshot. Then my afro on it. M Maya. Uh, Maya's in there. Ask Morgan what to do. Um, I don't know if it really matters which one I choose. Because ultimately, I feel like this is kind of a 50-50 where even if I ask her what to do, then I'll be told I'm heartless and we don't have a key to get inside the chamber, so all we could do is wait. Or we try to break into the chamber, realize the door is too heavy, and then get told about the key anyway. I don't think this choice matters, but chat, if you would like to make the decision, you get to make the decision. Enjoy your false choice. <laughs> Do we, we try to gallantly break into the chamber where it's locked and inevitably we will probably will not get in. Or ask Morgan what to do, where she obviously hates us and doesn't have the key anyway. <laughs> in the meantime, as chat makes their decision, let's take a look at the profiles before we go too far. So we have Maya Fey, who's allegedly 18. My assistant until a year ago, now she's trying to be a spirit medium. We have Dr. Turner Gray, who's only 35? Really? Okay. The director of the Gray Surgical Clinic, where the malpractice incident occurred. We have Pearl Fay, who's eight. Ran away as soon as she saw me, a little girl who's Maya's cousin. We have Morgan Fay, whose hair is so voluminous that it doesn't fit in the profile image, age unknown. Maya Zan, a member of the Fay clan branch family. She's the mother of Pearl. We're finally Lotta Hart, claims to be an investigative photographer. She lives in the next big scoop. Chat says they think Phoenix would cause property damage. Okay, let's do that then. Well, Mr. Lawyer, what's the plan? What else? We're gonna break in. What? But there's only one key and the kids got it. We're gonna have to break the door. Is that all right, Miss Faye? And then we ask her anyway. Well, yes. But there is one matter, that is. Don't try to stop me. Send the repair bill to the right and company law offices later. Yeah, now that's what I call being a man. Slam. Slam. Crash! Oh, we actually broke in. That surprises me.
D Dr. Gray. Flick. I... I was... murdered. M Maya? That man... murdered me. So I killed... him. What? Flick. Lada, at a time like this... Times like this are perfect for snapping up shots. But anyway, what's going on here? This girl, is she... Maya? Step away from there. Please leave this area to me. Go quickly and inform the police. But, but, hurry, before there are more victims here. Hey, let's go, city boy. Leave this to the granny. June 19th, Crane Village. A cell phone doesn't get reception way out here. They ended up using the phone booth to call the police. And... They're on their way. That's good. Lordy, I saw a genuine mysterious phenomena. Seems really on edge because of all this. Not that I blame her. Scared to death by what's going on. Well, might as well talk to her about what she witnessed. Hey, mister. That gal. My... She wasn't the one that pulled the trigger, was she? Oh, yeah. Lana doesn't know that when Maya's channeling, her whole physical appearance changes. And again, weren't there only two of them in there? I reckon she must have done it then. Let's ask about Dr. Gray. Lada, what do you know about Dr. Gray? Not much, but I did some digging. That's one gem with a bad reputation. Really? Here he's good at surgery and stuff. His personality stinks like wet sheep. Certainly an expression. I sort of got the same impression myself. He's a real... Oh, he's real controlling. As soon as his nurse or patients don't do what he says, he starts a hollering. Must have been real rough to work for him. Alright, can I just go back to the meditation room? June 19th, Fay Manor, meditation room. Ah, oh, Mr. Wright. Miss Fay. How's, um, Mystic Maya? She has returned to this world. The spirit severing technique was successful. Let me see her, please. She is still unconscious. Humbly request that you wait outside for her recovery. Guess I just have to wait. Ugh. The police are here. Sorry to keep you waiting. Huh? You again? What are you doing all the way out here, Detective Gumshoe? It's actually kind of funny. I was in the area for a business trip, pal. Well, time to check out the crime scene. I'll have to question everyone here later on. So just sit tight, all right? Why is he grinning at me? Shall I show you to the scene of the crime, Detective Jim Shoe? Um, my name isn't Jim Shoe. The two of them went into the channeling chamber. Guess all I could do now is see what everyone else has to say. Can I go into the channeling chamber? Oh, I can. Police are busily running here and there. I don't see Maya anywhere. Hey, you! Don't touch anything! Look, I really need to ask you some questions. Um, don't look at me like I'm some sort of uncaring jerk. Tell you what, pal. Why don't you ask me a few questions, alright? Well, we're gonna examine the blood on the floor. Oh, we can't. Hmm. We can't examine anything in the room. Interesting. Let's talk. About Maya. Um, about Maya. Hate to break this to you, pal, but... The way things look now, that girl's the only one who could have done it. Yeah, only Maya and the victim were inside this room, after all. But Maya is... That's more about her later, pal. Right now, I've got a job to do, and that's collecting evidence. Detective Gumshoe looks like a real professional. And yet, something about his expression still looks the same. Well, he only has so many faces, Phoenix. Come on. Art budget is only so high. 
Cause of death. So, Dr. Gray was shot with a gun, huh? He was shot in the forehead. But... But... But he was also stabbed in the chest with a knife. Okay. That seems a little overkill. A knife? Basically, the Vic was first stabbed, then he was shot. Presenting the badge, chat. Oh, I'm really busy right now. Take a look at it later, all right, pal? I didn't even take a glance at it. Poor Phoenix. All right, so I did as much talking as I could there. Let's go to the winding way. Go to the side room. June 19th, Fay Manor, side room. Hmm. Pretty sure there was someone sleeping here earlier. Like, how can I help you? Ugh. I'm, uh, that is, I... Oh boy, look at that. Look at the little dance she's doing, chat. Um, like, so isn't it about time to start? Huh? Time to start what? You know, like, the channeling. Channeling? Oh, 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 oh! Uh, no, actually, the situation has kind of changed. Huh? Like, what do you mean? Please stay calm, but there's been a murder. Um, so, like, a murder is that thing where, like, one person kills another, right? Yes, a person has killed another person. Oh, that's, uh, what are the words I'm looking for? It's like, like, totally a bummer. It's totally a bummer, chat. Yeah, for all that effort, that's all she had to say. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to, like, introduce myself. <laughs> My name is Eeny Meeny. Ugh. <laughs> oh, OMG says chat, can she be the next victim? I was gonna say, where's Mo, chat? Where's Mo? Um, at the college, I'm researching and studying parapsychology. Parapsychology? That's right. Um, I think people, like, usually call it occult studies or something. Like, supernatural phenomena, ESP and psychic powers, that sort of stuff. That's pretty out there. I I'm Phoenix Wright, attorney at law. I'm presenting in the badge chat. Like, I'm really sorry, but I'm not all that smart. And she hits her head and does the tongue sticking out thing. So I don't, like, get it. Hmm. Why does it feel like she's putting on an act? Ooh, that was an interesting comment from him, actually. We have Eeny Meeny, allegedly 21, a college student, huge fan of the occult and is doing research in parapsychology. So I think this might be the person that Dr. Gray referenced earlier, if I'm following the story so far. The incredible shrinking brain? Yeah, pretty much. Let's ask about herself. So what brings you here today? Um, like, so... I was the one who told Dr. Gray about this place. Oh, well, there's the confirmation. Because no one could be this dumb, asked Calvisha. Yeah, pretty much. He asked me, like, do you know of a good spirit medium? Hmm, Dr. Gray did say something about being introduced to this place. Because, like, talking to dead people and, like, multiple personalities are my thing. I see. Then why were you taking a nap here? Like, I wasn't feeling good. Huh? I'm, like, allergic to sesame seeds. They, like, must have put some in the food they served for lunch. Oh, that doesn't sound fun. So I, like, felt sick, came in here to, like, sleep. I totally feel like I wasted my time because I, like, slept a long time. Let's ask what, what happened, although I feel like chat does not want to hear the answer to this question. So you were sleeping here the entire time? Yeah, ever since lunch. Do you know anything about the murder that took place? Like, what? Oh, oh, that? I, like, totally know nothing. So who was, like, you know, killed? The surgeon that requested the channeling, Dr. Gray. Ooh, she dot dot dotted on that. We'll do the victim. You and Dr. Gray knew each other, right? I don't know any Dr. Gray. Ooh, strange reaction from her. 
Chat, like, totally believes she knows, like, nothing? Exactly. Oh, really? And what was that all that talk about him earlier? Huh? Well, uh, like, a long, long time ago, it was like a patient, yeah. Sounds like she's trying to hide something. <laughs> Chat, no. <laughs> no way, Phoenix. Ace Detective. Alright, so I don't think I have anybody else to talk to. Left the blanket a mess. Are you gonna fold it? Like, I had a really good nap, and like... I was thinking of leaving it like this, so it's all set for tonight. Hmm... I was gonna say, Chad, don't you find that suspicious? The graphic looks the same, even though she's not in the bed anymore. Mm-hmm. Anyway... Go back to the winding way. That man can learn a thing or two here. Followed by Calvisham saying he hates mobile for autocorrect or lack of autocorrect. Poor Calvisham. There's no one here, as usual. Ah! Oh god, the five. You gotta warn me when the five head is coming up. Listen. Like, chat, like... <laughs> Like, the, her appearance will never not bother me. Like, why are her eyes, like, below her ears? That's It's really weird. Human, humans are not like that. Like, it just... Something's wrong with her face. Like, her ears should have been lower, at least, if we're fitting the proportions. Or her face should have been raised up. Like, you could pick one. Don't do it. Don't do both. She has a giant brain. It's just like... You know, when you learn about drawing characters... <laughs> It's just one of those things where if you've even taken like a single class of drawing where you take you draw you draw the circles and then you draw the line to divide the circle in half and when you do the eye line that's where the ears are like it's just like literally taught in every basic drawing class it's like it's, just, it's basic anatomy I'm not asking for much here but anyway ever seen Alex Kid I think she came from that game I've not seen Alex Kid Anyway, I will try not to bring up her appearance too much more, but seriously, it's it really does bother me a lot. Pearl dot dot dots at us. You're Pearl, right? Hmm. Silent as ever. What's that she's got in her hand? Uh-oh, chat. The key. I've seen it somewhere before. What do you mean you've seen it? Phoenix, what do you think this is a key to? <laughs> Alright, chat. Flash the badge. Um, oh, Pearl gasps. See, like, it looks more normal there. It looks slightly more normal there, but it's still bad. <laughs> and then she ran. What is it? Is it my hair? Is it too spiky? N not spiky enough? Did she run to the side room? Oh. And then she's just back. Just... I like she just legit ran away and I had to come back. Um. Oh no, she ran away again. Oh, just in general. Alright, so we can't talk to her yet then. Hmm. Alright, so let's see. So for now, we can't interact with her. So either I need Morgan to give us something, or Maya needs to give us something. So I'm back in Crane Village. She's probably scared out of her wits after having a murder take place right by her. Lada? God, don't let it be neat. Oh, let me try this again. Sorry, this is all, all no spaces. I gotta interpret little by bit. God, don't let it be me next. I guess is how she would have said it. Ugh. Don't scare me like that. What do you mean? You're the one scaring me. It's because you flashed a kid with your badge, <laughs> pretty much. I weren't so tough, you'd have another dead body on your hands. Mine. Oh no, we could ask her for any ideas? Oh, we're in desperate times now. Did you see or notice anything that stuck out at you? Nah, well, maybe one thing. What is it? How's that my poor stomach's not good at handling this kind of thing? Uh, uh, what? Curses and ghosts and stuff coming back to get you. This is too much, I say. What is too much? Being a cult photographer. 
That's some scary stuff. I'm gonna try to be a celebrity photographer now. Oh no, chat. Going after photos more within your reach from now on. More glamour, less score. What's up? Oh yeah! W what is it? Took some hot pictures earlier. Huh? Remember? Took some pictures at the murder scene inside. Ah, she did. Two even. The seance murder. Sure like the ring of that. It'll be a sensational story. Lotta? Sorry, but my journalistic sense is burning inside me. Hate to cut and run, but I'm heading back in. Gotta beat those cops to the scoop of the century. <laughs> I don't know who's scarier. Scarier, Lotta or the spirits? Why does it feel like we've been through this before? It's because it, it literally, they're just rehashing the first game. Right, Chet, they're just, they're just rehashing. Let's go back to the meditation room. Oh, dear madam, you have such impeccable timing. Like, what's all the buzz? Um, <clears throat> all right, everyone, listen up. You too, pal. I'm gonna give you all a brief update. Right now, it looks like the investigation's not gonna be done until real late. That is a terrible shame. I propose that everyone sleep here under the roof of the Fame Manor tonight. Or we could just we could just go home. Let's go home. What a mess. Can't believe how crazy this day turned out. I was arrested and taken away by the police. <laughs> Off screen, I guess. And I don't see myself getting any sleep tonight. June 20th. 8.02 a.m. Faye Manor, Meditation Room. <coughs> Excuse me, chat. Ugh, morning. Guess I must have nodded off at some point. Oh, Maya's okay. But hurry and get to the detention center ASAP. June 20th, 10.34 a.m. Detention Center, Visitor's Room. N nick Nick! I... Maya! What am I gonna do? Never imagined it would turn out like this. Calm down, Maya. Take deep breaths. Is that the second time she got arrested in the series? Yes? I think so. I'm gonna think of it the first time I met her. It all started right here in this detention center. I finally, I finally get to see you again, and... It's not your fault. You didn't do it. No, I... I did it. I killed that person. That wasn't you. It doesn't matter. Might as well has been me. I was too weak, and I... I couldn't control the spirit's power, so... I don't want to bring up the case quite yet, but... You don't have to be nice to me. I understand. This guard monitors the visitor's room. I wonder if he's bored. I think I never tell since he never looks over this way. He'll never look, chat. He'll never look. Smile, you're on candid camera. How inappropriate, Nick. Flash the badge, chat. Sorry, Nick. There's nothing really special about it. Oh, we got burn, chat. Ooh, nothing special about the badge. It's over. Let's ask her about the channeling. So you're the master or something of the Korean school of channeling? Actually, my mother is for now. And since that title is passed from mother to daughter, I guess I will be someday. But many people think that channeling isn't real, that it's all just an act. You believe in us, don't you? Yeah, as I've seen it with my own eyes. And Maya's channeling is spirit. Not only her voice, but her whole physical appearance changes. <laughs> they're, they're trying to drill it in in case you didn't see the first game. It's like, hint, her physical appearance change, changes. Hint, hint, hint. It's a supernatural phenomena that occurs every time. Happened this time, too. 
Uncle Grace said he wanted to call the nurse, so... Maya's body must have taken on that nurse's appearance. So that's what happened. What exactly happened in the channeling chamber? Dot 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 from Maya chat. I went into that room with Dr. Gray. I locked the door and sat down across from him. Okay. We closed our eyes and I began the channeling. This is sounding kind of creepy. Like the beginning of a scary story. Phoenix, your tolerance for creepy things is very low. <laughs> and that's the last thing I remember. What? After spirit comes into my body, I lose myself, my consciousness. Then you don't remember a single thing? When I came to, I was being held in my aunt's arms. And there was blood all over my clothes. Hmm. Oh, but I do remember having a dream. A dream? Let's ask about the dream in quotes. What kind of dream did you have while you were channeling? Um, I can't remember it all that well, but I was dead and buried in the ground. I couldn't move. It was unbearable. Really suffocating. When something like that. Uh, I, I see. I have no idea what to say to that. It was a really familiar smell, too. Under the ground? Yeah, can't quite place it, but I've smelled that same scent before. Guess that is about all the information I'm going to gather for today. I'm definitely curious for chat that has not seen the game before if they have any theories as to what's happening. For obviously, if people have played the game before, you know, <laughs> probably don't chime in at that point, but. For those playing along, because presumably Maya didn't do it, presumably. I'm curious if Chad is cooking up any theories. But anyway. Let's proceed. I'll be back later, Maya. In the meantime, please make sure you prepare it, okay? Huh? It? What is it? The document requesting me to be your attorney, of course. But... What's wrong? Are you sure? I mean, I'm guilty. I'm a murderer. You're going in mass psychosis? That's fair. No one's decided that yet. But I did. I killed that person with these two hands. That's enough, Maya. It's hopeless. If you defend me, you'll lose, I'm sure. Stop it. Help me. Nick, help me. I'm scared. Don't worry, I will. When is the trial? sounds like tomorrow as usual zero prep time all right i'm going now wait this jewel this is called a magatama that everybody in texas definitely has it's a magical charm and it's always protected me give this to pearly i'm sure she'll lend you her spiritual powers slightly translucent it's small but has a deep profound aura about it maya's magatama was received well we received her magatama it did not go in the court record, though, even though it definitely did. Oh, Dr. Turner Gray's updated to murder during a channeling. Maya Faye updated to was arrested on suspicious of murder while channeling. Everything else is about the same. What happens if I present this to her? Make sure you show that to Pearly, okay, Nick? She'll be a big help to you. Well, back to the village we go, chat. I have to save Maya, no matter what. It's her life on the line. When the world happened in that room yesterday. Well, let's go to the meditation room. June 20th, Fame Manor, meditation room. Meditation room nurtures all mediums, young and old. Even mediums in training, I'd wager. It's pretty deserted today. Probably because of the murder yesterday. I'm not gonna lie, chat. The very first time I played this particular case, I, I think I'm slowly remembering the case. 
I am 1000% sure I knew how it was done before this day ended. <laughs> like, before we even went to trial, I'm like, yeah, I think I know. I don't think I even need to talk to the witnesses. I would be like, Your Honor, I'd like to solve the case. <laughs> Looks like Detective Gumshoe isn't here today. I should take this chance and thoroughly check the room. If I'm lucky, I might uncover a clue or two. Oh, Mr. Wright. Good morning. I am on my way to go meet Mystic Maya, and I thought to bring her some items to make her feel more at home. Namely, tea so bitter you lose your tongue, and jaw-droppingly large strawberry desserts. I'm sure Maya will be very grateful. That's Mystic Maya, good sir. Ugh, she's one scary lady. Oh dear, sweet Mystic Maya. Pearl wept constantly for you last night, as did I. I know it's important for me to search the site. I should ask her some questions too while I have the chance. Um, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna examine the folding screen though. The beautiful and expensive folding screen looks quite nice. It seems to see a sacred text on it, but I can't read it. This is. It's a hole. Does this have been made by a bullet? About inch, eight inches off the ground is a small hole that looks like a bullet hole. Hmm. Bowling screen added to the court record. Okay, I don't think anything else is of interest, but we'll re-examine stuff. I guess this is an altar, whatever it is, it feels important. Yeah, nothing new is here. Can I look at the blood stain? This is where the medium sits, I assume. For four panels of this flooring. Straw on the flooring feels a little damp, probably from humidity in the air. Or, you know, the blood. You know, it could just be the blood. No matter what I do, my eyes keep getting drawn to the pool of blood in the center here. Alright, so I don't think anything else is relevant, but I'll just finish up the search, just because. The meditation room is on the very on the other side of this very heavy-looking door. The lock on it is broken because, well, I broke it. It doesn't seem possible, but I managed to break it pretty badly. We want to do something bad enough, people could do the most amazing things. Anyway, let's talk to her about what happened. I'd like to ask you a few questions about what happened yesterday. Do you mean that awful tragedy? That man murdered me, so I killed him. Maya? Step away from there. Please leave this area to me. Go quickly and inform the police. What happened here in this room after I left? Well... First, I struck Mystic Maya on the head. Make her go unconscious, correct? That is correct. Next, perform the spirit severing technique. Spirit severing technique? The spirit of that nurse was inside of Mystic Maya's body. I used the technique to send the nurse's spirit back to the other world. I wonder if this kind of testimony is even admissible in a court of law. Let's ask about the channeling chamber. By the way, what is this room exactly? The channeling chamber? This room was created for the sole purpose of preventing such a tragedy as yesterday. What do you mean? Sometimes, when an inexperienced medium calls an especially strong spirit, that spirit may become violent and revolt, as you witnessed yesterday. Revolt? But how? When a spirit enters the medium's body, she loses her will and herself steps aside. But in another way, the spirit is borrowing the medium's body. Good sir. But isn't that extremely dangerous? An experienced medium has little problem controlling his spirit. But Maya, I mean Mystic Maya, it was her first channeling. And that was why I insisted on locking the door. However, I never thought that would be calling danger upon the client himself. I am grateful that one of our heirlooms was not damaged in this horrible incident. And that would be... That folding screen there. It is the Crane's sacred writings. Oops, that's not true. Along with the Crane's sacred urn, they are this village's most treasured possessions. 
If I had ever found out that something had happened to either one. I mean, something clearly happened to both, so she's kind of really bad at observation skills. Oh, the humanity. Odd for her to be worrying about the folding screen at a time like this. Guess this isn't just some dilapidated old screen after all. Let's ask about Pearl. So, how is Pearl today? Mr. Wright. Yes? In this world, Pearl is my most treasured possession. When compared to even Mystic Maya, Pearl has the spiritual power to become a master. Th that's very impressive. Until now, the women of the Branch family have thought of themselves to be inferior. But Pearl is different. Her spiritual strength is so great, it's even greater than some of the main family. Yes, Pearl is a channeling prodigy, and it's the pride of the Branch family. Wow, she's really fired up now. In any case, Pearl is so different from yours. Perhaps it is best for you to quit, good sir. Quit? Quit what? Well... Then I do believe it is time for me to take my leave. Alright? Lisa Maya said hi. What was that? Uh, I mean Mystic Maya. I will tell her. Ugh. Let's go to the Winding Way. Little Pearl isn't here today. Maybe she's at school? Oh, okay. Let's go back to the side room then. June 20th, side room. Oh, hey! Like, you're that guy from yesterday, the, uh, dentist guy? No, no, I'm a lawyer. That's right, um, Mr. Smith Esquire. That's right. Wait, I, I mean you're wrong. My name is right. Smith, right. Well, I got like three letters at least. I don't think she gets the point. Anyway, why are you here? So like, I study this thing called parapsychology at this college and, um, you told me about that yesterday. Necessity allergy too. What I really like to know is why you're still here today. Oh, so like, that's what you meant. Like, you should have been more like, clear about it. Chad hates it. So sorry, my bad. No, it's okay. Like, it's really... That's it? What, why'd you stop mid-sentence? Did I? So, like, what was I talking about again? Phoenix dot dot dots. Whatever wanted another genuine mysterious phenomena. It's right here. Okay, chat, give me... One, maybe two minutes. I ran out of something to drink. And we know this game has a lot of speech. So I'm just gonna briefly step away. You get to you get to look at her bang her head for a little bit. I'll be back with some water.
Okay, chat, let's see what she has to say today. Eeny meeny. So, why are you still here today? Like, there's so much for me to, like, study here. Like what? Like, the medium's training or, like, how they inherit their spiritual power. I suppose. This village is the real thing, after all. So, like, I asked if I could stay here for, like, a little longer. She seems like the carefree type, at least, on the surface. Let's ask her what happened. Have you heard about the murder? It's, like, totally scary, she says with a silly smile plastered on her face. So do you know anything about it that might help? She dot dot dots. Somehow, I don't think she has a grip on reality. Let alone what's going on here. Let's ask about the victim. About the victim, Dr. Gray. I don't know who you're talking about. Like, wait, I think you asked about him, like, yesterday, too. That's right. Actually, yesterday when I asked was... You and Dr. Gray knew each other, right? I don't know any Dr. Gray. Oh, really? What was all that talk about him earlier? Huh? Well, uh... Like a long, long time ago, I was like a patient, yeah. Okay, she's definitely hiding something from me. Like, is something wrong? Go back to the winding may. Or winding may, excuse me. Winding way. Oh, I guess Pearl doesn't have school after all, chat. Ah! You surprised me! How are you today? Hmm. She isn't open to friendly chatting. Huh? She's still holding something in her hand. Looks like the same thing she had yesterday. Well, we're not gonna get any further unless I present this. Oh, yeah. I said to give this to you. She's instantly crying. Oh, I'm in trouble now! Morgan sees us like this. I'll be the next one they're channeling. That, that's... That's Mystic Myers! Huh? She actually spoke. Who are you? I'm Phoenix Wright. I, uh... Worked with Maya. Y you work with Mystic Maya? You... You're Mr. Nick, right? Uh... Excuse me? I bet I know who she picked Nick up from. I know who you are. You're... You're Mystic Maya's special someone. Ugh. W w what? So then, of course. You're gonna help Mystic Maya, aren't you? That's why you're, what you're gonna do, right? W well, yeah, I, I will. Oh, wow. It's like a beautiful fairy tale. That earnest look shining brightly in your eyes. It must be true love. W what? Why am I being boiled into a bright red lobster by this little kid? So jealous of Mystic Maya. Oh, what a wonderful relationship. Wait, I, uh... I mean... We aren't... Uh, things aren't, like... E I can tell you're a good person. All right, Mr. Nick. I may be small, but I'm gonna help you in any way I can. I'll present the badge now. Sure it's helpful to you in some way. But I'm still in training, so I don't know anything about it. No, 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 it's okay. I shouldn't have shown you something so trivial anyway. Very sorry. What happens if I show her the folding screen? Are you interested in Crane's traditional things too, Mr. Nick? Crane's sacred writings are on this folding screen. Oh, is that what's written on it? Actually, what caught my eye was this hole in it. It's a very old screen. I think maybe Bugs made it by eating through it. Mm-hmm. Sure doesn't look that way to me. Okay, so we did get a little comment on the folding screen. I should probably present the folding screen later to Morgan to see if we get new comments. Anyway, let's ask about Pearl. Pearl, are you friends with Maya? I feel very grateful to be friends with her. She's so great. I'm gonna be like Mystic Maya when I grow up. Will really you look up to her? Wow. I had no idea Maya was so... revered. Usually when people don't use Mystic Maya's title, I get mad. Oh, sorry. But if it's you, Mr. Mick, Mr. Nick, then it's okay. Because... Because you're special to her. Where in the world did she get an idea like that? By the way, this may be rude, but which channeling school are you from? 
Which channeling school? Yes. For example, I study the crane technique. Ah, uh, I get it. No, 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 no. I'm a lawyer. A uh, lawyer. Lawyer? Yup. Is that related to spirit mediums in any way? Um, none that I know of. Wait, are you telling me you don't know what a lawyer is? I'm sorry, but I have no idea. Maya did say Pearl doesn't know much about the outside world. Let's ask about the item in her hand. So, what's that you got there, Pearl? Oh, this? I found it yesterday. Hmm. You want it? He give it to you. Let's accept it. All right. Well, if you really want to give it to me. Hehe. <laughs> you look like a child at a toy store, Mr. Nick. She not only speaks in a refined manner, but laughs in one, too. Black key added to the court record. An old steel key, a green jewel is set in the center of the key's grip. Um, Mr. Nick? Yes, Pearls? I could call you that, right? Too curl to, you're too cute to be called just Pearl. Ugh. Sure, Mr. Nick. Um, are you sure it's okay for me to have this Magatama? Yeah, it's okay. I was told to give it to you. But I can't accept something like this. All I really should do is charge this Magatama with spiritual energy. Spiritual energy. Please take this. I'm sure it'll be helpful. What do you mean? We'll let you see people's secrets. See people's secrets? Edict study stumbled my way to victory way, pretty much. Yes. It's all right with you. I'd like to accompany you for a little while. I can explain the Magatama's power to you. We meet someone hiding a secret. Okay. So if I remember correctly, we don't actually have what we need yet in the side room. I'm going to choose not to go there first. Let's see if there's anybody else we could talk to first. Oh, Gumshoe will work. Hey, it's you, pal. So you're going to be your lawyer, I bet. Yes. Oh. Really feel bad for you, pal. Just this once, I wish I could be on your side. Detective Gumshoe. Yeah, but I shouldn't be saying that kind of stuff to you. Hey, you're a cute kid. Haha, <laughs> I'm not scary. Honest. Wow, never knew Gumshoe like kids. Hey, I know. I'll show you something cool. How's this? It's a real genuine pistol. Okay, see, that would be the US. <laughs> hey, chat, like, never mind, that checks out. Detective Gumshoe, what are you doing showing her something that dangerous? Oh, sorry. Let's ask about Maya's guilt. What about Maya and the charges against her? I don't think you can win, pal. You're talking about proof. We've got a few pieces. You've got proof? Yeah, pal. The puffy-haired photographer is going to testify tomorrow. Must be talking about Lada. Actually, speaking of Lada. Yeah, yeah, we know she took photos. That just happened. I don't need a flashback to that scene. Lada's hot pictures. Wonder what her camera captured. Besides, must have realized by now, pal. There's no way anyone other than Maya could have done it. Well, chat, I'm sure, I'm sure you realize <laughs> that we have to figure out another way that this was done. Dot 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 exclamation mark, or else Maya is done for. What am I supposed to say to Pearls now? Ask about the victim. About Dr. Gray. The victim wasn't super famous, but people still knew who he was. <laughs> Rip Maya, yeah, pretty much. His face was all over those tabloid shows last year. Yeah, I know. I was looking through some newspapers from last year and... Huh? Could have sworn I had. Cut an article out, but I guess I must have lost it. He's searching through his pockets. And boy, are those big. Hmm. Look really interesting, too. Hey, do you have a copy, pal? A copy of that article. I think Dr. Gray might have brought a copy to the office when he came by. Hint, hint. Tomorrow's trial. About Maya's trial tomorrow. Got two pieces of news for you, pal. Two? Yeah, bad news and even worse news. Which do you want to hear first? I don't really care. It doesn't change the fact that I'm not going to like it. All right, pal. 
Well, the prosecutor for the trial is Prosecutor Von Karma. What? Von Karma? Flashbacks for people that didn't see the first game. Manfred Van Karma. He was an all-inspiring veteran prosecutor. Never lost a case in the 40 years of his career. He raised a fearsome disciple. The horrible aftertaste of the evil he force-fed me is something I'll never forget. Wait a sec. Didn't Von Karma stand trial and... That's where the other piece of bad news comes in. The Von Karma you're facing tomorrow is actually his successor. Successor? Let's ask about the successor. So, um, who is this successor to Von Karma? Literally, pal. It's Prosecutor Von Karma's kid. His kid became a prosecutor real young. Like 13, I'm sorry, 13, excuse me. And hasn't lost a trial since. Is it because the defense is inept? What? That's what they call a prodigy, pal. Oh no, not the whip. Oh no, no, no. We're, we're not gonna talk. We'll, we'll, we'll talk more when the, when the person's revealed. I will not comment further on that. But welcome Zero Raider, hopefully you're doing well. Hmm. Kid, huh? Oh, oh wait a second. 13? Uh, the age... The kid became a prosecutor at the age of 13? I mean, a prodigy like that. I would have heard something about... Oh, no, no. The kid was born and raised in Germany, pal. Oh, you're sick? Sorry to hear, Zero Raider. Hopefully you recover soon. At least you have some Phoenix right to hopefully lift your knight slash spirits up. That country's got a lot of stuff. It's a great place to develop a person's talents. Germany, huh? That's probably why I never heard of this person. Ugh. Still, all it takes is someone mentioning the name Von Karma. Oh, it'll be a very interesting... It'll be a very interesting introduction for this prosecutor. Now I get a terrible... I get terrible flashbacks to that case. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Stop it. Get a grip on yourself, Phoenix. None of that matters anymore, now that he's gone. But anyway, I think that's all we could do for now. So, let's just choose to go to the office. I think I need something from here anyway to proceed. Especially based off the last conversation. Phew. Feels like I've been gone forever. It's only been one day. Oh, that's right. Where's that newspaper Dr. Gray brought the other day? Gee, Chad, it could be anywhere. <laughs> it's literally on the desk. <laughs> like, not even surrounded by other things. It's just literally there over the phone. Oh, here it is. Right on top of my desk. Oh, I love the blurry times. It's the only thing you left behind that's going to be of any help. Newspaper clipping one. One year ago on May 2nd, 14 patients died from malpractice at Gray Surgical Clinic. Okay. So I think with... Oh, let's examine the poster. What does he have to say about this? Most of the TV action hero, the Seal Samurai. I suck it up there right before she left. I wouldn't say the Seal Samurai and an attorney's office are a good match. I threatened to curse me with some magic spell. So I guess it could stay. There's a giant building just outside the window. The Gaywater Hotel, a high-class luxury hotel. So recently, it had been a normal business-class hotel. Charlie, a quite decorative plant. The memento of my boss, Mia, who passed away. The rest of the room may be in shambles, but I always managed to care for this little fella. Difficult-looking legal books stand in a formidable row. They mock me. Actually, I've neglected them for so long, a layer of death has started to form. One of these days just to try to build up the courage to read one, I guess. Wow, we are so lame, chat. <laughs> just like... <laughs> Woo, our hero, ladies and gentlemen. The lawyer too afraid to open things related to his profession. Let's present the newspaper clipping, since he mentioned it. Um, Dr. Gray brought this over to my office the other day, and... Hey! It's that news story, the one about the malpractice suit. Eldritch says, lurked all this time. Welcome back, Eldritch. 14 patients died. It caused a huge sting. Yeah, but that's not all. Not all, pal. Things only got worse after that. Chat's still not entirely convinced Phoenix can read. It's true. <laughs> Him kind of sounding out Karain Village. It feels like he learned, like, just, just enough to read the locations on a map, but that's it. <laughs> I'm not convinced he can read other things. Anyway, back to the dialogue. You mean the car accident the nurse died in? Hmm. 
Oh, here we go. I brought my own clipping with me today. Here, pal, this is for you. All right, thanks. Newspaper clipping too added to the court record. Mimi Minnie, a nurse at Gray Surgical Clinic, died after falling asleep at the wheel. Or Miney, excuse me, Mimi Miney. Hmm, chat. Hmm. Hmm. I like how he presented the clip thing and he's like, I'm not going to talk about it, but he's the one that gave it to us. Always love those little inconsistencies. Oh, she's not even in here. Oh. Well, I guess I lost my chance to ask her about the hole in the curtain. Well, thank you, Calvisham. Alright, so now let's go into the side room. Are you ready for the gimmick of the game, chat? Hello again. We seem to be seeing a lot of each other today. Well, she's like totally cute. Is she like your daughter? What? No. How old do you think I am? Let's ask about the victim. I ask you about the victim, Dr. Gray. Oops, so something different happened now, chat. Here we go. Ah, what is that? You can see it, can't you, Mr. Nick? You can see the lock on that person's heart. Huh? What? This is the power of the Magatama. Only you can see these sight blocks, Mr. Nick. Sight blocks, huh? The more someone wants to hide their secret, the more locks you will see. It's only one. I think you can easily unlock it. Unlock? But how? Please use Mystic Mind's Magatama on that person. Let's remove the lock. I have no idea what she's talking about, but I guess I'll give it a try. Let's be careful, though, Mr. Nick. If you make a mistake, it will hurt you. You don't think you have the proof you need. You must have the courage to stop. Well, I've got to start somewhere. Let's give the psych lock thing a try. So basically, chat. I think this is kind of like their way of making up for the first game with some of the inconsistencies with conversations. So if something is needed for the plot to advance, a lot of them are indicated by this little lock icon here. So this is telling us that we have to present something to them in order to proceed. So a, a big issue in the first game in particular was some characters it was kind of obvious what to give them, and then other characters it really wasn't. And there were sometimes you were just kind of feeding them random items and they just happened to know something about it. And you needed that for another character, for example. So I think in an effort to curb it, this is what they've done. Now, whether or not it's good, that's something the chat will, uh, I think, come to their own conclusions by the end of the case, at least. And also possibly by the end of the game. But anyway, now it's time to present the gimmick. So it says, this girl's hiding something, I'm sure of it. Guess I have no choice but to remove the lock. Alright, so first, I fuse Maya's Magatama. Alright, so let's present it now. I think we've seen all the dialogue related. Take that, chat. The victim. So it's kind of like incorporating the way we do the trial interrogations, but putting it in the conversations with the people beforehand. It's interesting, but uh, it definitely has its faults. So look at her health, chat. We're at full health so far. Heeny meeny. I believe you do know who Dr. Gray is. I told you, like, how many times do I have to, like, repeat myself? You're, like, so totally sure. Then where's, like, your proof? Well, maybe possible you never actually met Dr. Gray in person. I do believe you may have at least known indirectly of him. Like, what do you mean, like, indirectly? To try to show that possibility existed for now. Hmm. There's something that shows a possible connection between Edie and Dr. Gray. Gee, chat. It could be anything. If only there was some way we could indirectly connect them with all the pieces of... Anyway, it's newspaper clipping, too. Take that. Take a look at this newspaper clipping. Like, what is it? A story about an accident? Please read the victim's name. Um, Mimi Miney. 
Miney is a pretty rare last name, wouldn't you say? Miss Mimi Miney wouldn't happen to be a relative of yours, would she? Dot 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 exclamation mark chat. So you noticed, she was my older sister. I'm sorry about your loss. Your sister. Was she a nurse? Perhaps at Dr. Gray's surgical clinic? She dot 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 exclamation mark chat. Gray surgical clinic. I don't think I need to tell you the clinic was run by the victim, Dr. Turner Gray. Which is how you knew of Dr. Gray. You knew him through your sister, as she eats the hat. Psych lock broken, chat. Unlock successful. Now let's ask her about the victim. Please, tell me all you know about Dr. Gray. My my sister's name was Mimi Mini. I, I, I keep wanting to call her saying Mini again, but it's Miney. Mimi Miney. She was like a nurse at Dr. Gray's clinic. That's what I thought. I heard that like Dr. Gray was like tough on people, like a total slave driver. My sis was like always coming home totally wiped out. She was overworked. Wiped out? Is that why she fell asleep at the wheel? That guy like drove my sis so hard. So that's like why the accident happened. One where 14 patients died from malpractice. Yeah, like, I think that was the doctor's fault too. My sis was pushed by like everyone's expectations and like her duties and stuff. And that pushed her to her death. Oh, I I'm sorry. So like, are we done? I've like already told my story to like everyone. Do you understand now, Mr. Nick? This is how a psych lock works. Well, I don't plan to pry into people's hearts unless I absolutely need to. The lock this time was pretty easy, but might meet people who aren't as willing to give in later on. Boy, is that an understatement. <laughs> so we'll see later on. If you don't have enough proof, be careful and know when to stop trying. Well, chat, you should see something very suspicious in this room that wasn't here before. Hmm, where did this box come from? Sure this wasn't here last night. Looks like a box for storing clothes, but it's pretty big for just clothes. Mostly empty. A few folded pieces of channeling costume sit at the bottom. <laughs> I mean, he might as well as just say, it's big enough for a person to be in. <laughs> I mean, like, he pretty much said it, but didn't say it. Nice try, though, Phoenix. So I guess we're done? Uh, meditation room. Alright, so something's... Oh, something's happening here. Crane Village. Mr. Nick? Hmm, what's wrong? I've never left Crane Village. Really? Wow, that's uh, pretty amazing. You're going to meet with Mystic Maya, aren't you? Please tell her I said hi. And then she leaves. Hey, wait! She ran off again. Well, I know Eni's secret now, but... Still don't have any idea how it's going to save Maya. I don't even know if I should go in there with a smile or a straight face. Ugh. Anyway, let's go to the detention center. June 28th detention center. Visitor's room. What am I supposed to do? I'm almost out of time. Can I really do anything? Can I really save her? Her lawyers, lady and ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Things you don't want to hear from your lawyer. Sorry to keep you waiting. Huh? Must be Maya. It's been a long time. Hasn't it, Phoenix? Oh, it's Mia again. Jeez, come on. <laughs> let her die. <laughs> Please just let her die and move on in the other world. That voice. Right, chat? Let her go. <laughs> she needs rest. M Mia! Even without me being here, looks like you've learned to stand on your own. <laughs> Don, she will just not move on exactly. <laughs> I feel like this could be, you know, maybe this will be filed under spiritual harassment. Like, please just let her let her rest in peace. Mia, she's Maya's older sister and my mentor. She was a top-notch defense lawyer. A certain case forced her into retirement. What do you mean, retirement in quotes? That's a rare, really weird way to phrase that. Well, whenever I'm in trouble, she comes to help just like this. 
Spiritual restraining order is needed. I agree, Imperameter. This is definitely spirit harassment at minimum. Your spirit comes back from the other world and borrows Maya's body for a bit. Phoenix, you can't make that kind of face in front of your client. A lawyer is someone who smiles no matter how bad it gets, and especially when it's bad. Mia, you can't smile at the end if you haven't been smiling the whole way there. In any case, the face you're making now is no face to show a client, Phoenix. But, but so tell me all about it. I'm gonna guess that my sister is in a lot of trouble again. I told her everything about what happened in the last two days. Mia closed her eyes, deep in thought, while she listened. She was really sleeping. <laughs> Can you imagine, chat? I see. Mia, what am I supposed to do? It's pretty clear what a good lawyer does in this situation. <laughs> you can't take another case, right, chat? And that is, tell me, please. Believe in your convictions. No, I don't think that's how that works. And fight for the complete acquittal of your client. Let's talk about being not guilty. I think Maya's not guilty. You need to be so sure. I know she is. I'll give you a hint as to why. Yes? Mediums can have dreams. Sure. There we go, chat. Round of applause. That, that'll hold up in court. <laughs> she wasn't dreaming, Your Honor. She didn't do it. They can't? From what you told me. Sounds like Maya was having a dream while channeling. Yeah. Said she dreamt that she, she had died and been buried in the ground. But that is impossible. Heard it from her, I'm sure. When a medium channels, her own spirit disappears. Which means that it's impossible for her to dream during that time. Of course! Then, what does this mean? Yeah, I think I think by this point, I was like, okay, now I'm convinced that the method I thought of is the right one. <laughs> I'd just like you to know. That was the only piece of evidence I needed confirmation on. But anyway, we'll see We'll see if people going blind into it understand what's going on. I don't think most of the cases are particularly hard, I will say in general. I definitely say I have an advantage because I played a lot of... Um, not played, plays the wrong word. I watch a lot of detective series. So I, I've just seen like hundreds of cases like this. So I'm just like, okay, which one of the 10 methods is it? <laughs> we just gotta rule them out as I go through. So sadly, I have a big advantage on this game in general. Which means that when we go to play blind for real next time on the next game i'll see how much of that training comes in handy i think it's safe to be i think it's safe to bet that maya was set up a setup it's up to you to blow the lid on this case tomorrow and show how she was set up evidence question mark am i supposed to prove her innocence when i have nothing to go on you're looking for a clue it's already in your hands i love how we're too stupid to think about the key like we have to tell we have to be told by the spirit of someone that's not even there what our clues are, because we are just so hopeless. <laughs> like, come on. They're, ki they're killing me. We shouldn't we be asking how she got the key? Is the, is, is the, is the hamster tired in the, in the head of uh, Phoenix Wright? Did it fall out of the wheel? Am I braining on no sleep and brain isn't braining right now? No worries, you have some time to think about it for sure. It'll be something you'll look back on and go, oh. It is? Just as it sounds, Phoenix. You already hold the key. <laughs> I, like, I like how unsubtle with it she is. She's like, come on, Phoenix. At least figure out one piece of it. Phoenix, you have two pieces of evidence. <laughs> and he'll give you a hint, Phoenix. It's not, the I mean, it's technically the folding screen too, but it's clearly the key. Really? Come on, show me the key to this case. The key, huh? All right, I'll show it to her. The key I hold. Well, in that scenario, we just straight up said we're gonna show it, so let's present it, I guess. Oh, you know what? What happens if I show the folding screen? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Attorney bad, so that's more important. Mia, oh, wow, this batch brings back a lot of memories, doesn't it? I'd love to stand with you at the defense's bench one more time. Mia. Did you take a look at this? Is that really all you have, Phoenix? There's no time left. Try to show me something that will help you in tomorrow's trial. Damn. Mia, have you seen this key before? Ah, oh, the key. It's literally the key to understanding everything. That's happened in this case. This key. 
Phoenix, listen. Right now, that key is sitting in your hand. However, it shouldn't be. It contradicts the facts. What does she mean? What do you mean, what does she mean? She's telling you that you, if the key was with Maya, it shouldn't be with you because Pearl had it. Come on, Phoenix. Think. Think, Phoenix, think. Shake him, chat. <laughs> I'm certain this key will be the piece of evidence that makes your case tomorrow. It's teasing us with the word of peace used there, but not quite the right number. You already know everything you need to know. Do we? We're pretty... Well, I mean, we as the audience might, but Phoenix is pretty dumb. I think we're gonna have to spell it out. Chat saying, Mia, at this point, I'm sure you'll be standing with us at the stand many more times. You won't move on and Nick can't lawyer alone. I mean, probably true. You know what the key to this case is. That is enough. But, but... How can I win tomorrow without knowing who the real murderer is? Who... Who could have... Phoenix, there's like two possible people at this point it could be. Phoenix, we haven't even been giving red herrings. Like for for like a detective one, like we can we can have some questions as to how it happened, but like we've been introduced to like so few people. <laughs> so unless unless we believe the shock twist is it's somebody we've never seen before, it should be fairly obvious, Phoenix, who she's referring to, but whatever. It isn't like the other case when we were doing uh, whatever the old man name was that was pretending to be senile. It's not one of those scenarios. Just shake your head, chat. Shake your head. I didn't know it at the time. But this day was going to end with a turn for the surprising. Uh-oh, chat. M Mia? What? What's wrong? That's right. Only I can see the psych locks. There you go, chat. Which means Mia must know something about the real murderer. But for this to be something that she would hide under lock and key from even me. What in the world is going on? Dun dun dun. To be continued. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of an issue with a lot of the Phoenix Wright cases. Like, I think the ones that are more memorable are the ones where it's, like, really, really ambiguous who did it, and you have yourself, like, doubting who did it. I don't know if I feel that way about the second game in general. Not specifically this case, just the second game <laughs> on the... on in general, because I feel like there's not, like, a whole lot of mystery, which makes me a little sad, because I personally like mysteries to an extent and i don't feel like i was really that bamboozled it's kind of like when somebody was showing me i think the game was called Rampa, and i'm like i kind of knew all the murders <laughs> like almost immediately before it even went to trial i was like yeah they're not super complex i had that feeling with this game there's some where they definitely get me and i feel where i'm gonna get tripped up especially as we go to replay it now is the order of evidence so i fully expect to mess up the evidence despite knowing what is happening so expect me to get a couple errors in this trial despite everything that i just mentioned june 21st 9 48 a.m district court defendant lobby number three what prosecutor von karma you mean no i heard it's his successor this time okay chat are you ready for a character successor Manfred von Karma was a really sinister man. He pulled all sorts of nasty tricks. Also, he could win. He was a man obsessed with the word perfection. He had a perfect record for 40 long years. Who knows what sort of dirty tricks he used to get each of those guilty verdicts. And now, his successor. I wonder what kind of person they will turn out to be. <laughs> I'm sure Chad is not prepared for it. Chat's not ready. It's no good. Mystic Maya. Early? You showed up. Thanks for coming all this way. I was really worried about you. Hey, where's your mother? Didn't you two come together? Mother's watching over the trainees. She said they have training for two days straight with no breaks. Huh? Then, then, you came all by yourself. Yep, I stuck out of the manor and followed a map. Don't tell me you walked all the way here. Of course not. I ran. That's... I can't... Oh my. If it takes two hours by train... Oh man. Curly? 
What about the train? Huh? What's a train? I give up. It's time, isn't it? I'm really scared. What if Von Karma tries to do something to me? Little do you know, Maya. At least I know Mr. Edgeworth would be nicer to me th than Von Karma. Maybe? Probably. Mr. Edgeworth? Who's that? Um, he's Nick's rival. Oh, he's also a friend. Objection, Objection chat. I still remember him as though I'd only seen him yesterday. I mean, it was technically last session, but... Objection, Objection chat. Every trial was a scorchingly fierce battle until the very end. Objection. Objection. I was always back and forth with them. When your rivals for life... Maya? Please don't mention that name ever again. Huh? But why, Nick? I'm... I'm sorry, Maya. I forgot you don't know. He... He's... He's gone. And he's not coming back. Ooh, there's the plot twist. What? Oh, wait, wait a second. What's that supposed to mean? Court will commence shortly. Please proceed into the courtroom, says the bailiff. Let's go. Now's not the time to talk about that anyway. N Nick? June 21st, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number two. Bang. Court is now in session for the trial of Maya Fay. All the prosecution and the defense prepared. Okay, she even does the, the gripping of the shoulder thing. That's a nice touch. So get ready, chat. The unknown person is here with the dot dot dots. What is with this kid? Judge dot dot dots. Ahem, Mr. Wright, are you prepared? Huh? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Why does he always seem mad at me? Mr. Phoenix Wright. You must be a little shocked because I'm a woman, correct? Hold on. So she's the famed successor to Prosecutor Von Karma? I am Francesca Von Karma, the prodigy. I, I see. I gave up a promising career in Germany and came to this country for one sole reason. Revenge! Well, chat, here it is. The whip is out already. Revenge? Is this about her father, Manfred von Karma? Um, if it's something of a personal nature, I'm sure you can... Ow! I'm talking. And if you interrupt again, my whip will do the speaking for me. Absolutely legal prosecution, chat. <laughs> She's carrying a weapon. She struck the judge. <laughs> I know, chat. She should just be immediately jailed. Please speak with your mouth like a normal person. I beg of you. Ow! Make no mistake. I will defeat you. Prepare to go down, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Bang. Prosecutor Von Karma, your opening statement, please. Those of Ankarma blood have only one fate, and that is perfection. Objection, she's in contempt of court. The defendant, Maya Fey, will find no escape from her guilt on my watch. Uh, very well. What is the defense's position? Your Honor, does the defense wish to enter a plea of not guilty? Yes. Foolish fool who foolishly dreams of foolish dreams. 10 minutes. I give the defense 10 minutes before it changes its plea. That's right. I'll have you running for the justified self-defense plea in no time. Foolish fool, chat. Justified self-defense. A plea usually reserved for when a person unintentionally kills in defense of themselves. It very easily make a solid case that it was self-defense, but... The defense stands by the plea of not guilty, Your Honor. Because the plea justifies self-defense is to say you did kill someone. How foolish. If that's how you want to play it, Mr. Phoenix Wright, then I shall now call the first witness. She's just as scary as her father. 
Like her, like father, like daughter, I suppose. Only with more whips for some reason. Witness. Your name and occupation. Yes, sir. My name is Dick Gumshoe. I'm a detective of the local precinct. Ah! Get to the point already. Explain to the court the details of this murder. I yes, sir. Um, if everyone would please look at this map. The channeling chamber has no windows and the door was locked shut. At the time of the murder, only the victim and the defendant were in the room. What were they doing in there? Um, they... well, they were channeling a spirit, sir. Ch channeling a spirit? That's quite the look of disbelief there, Your Honor. <clears throat> anyway, a few minutes after the channeling started, gunshots were heard coming from inside the room, sir. A few of the witnesses broke the door down and rushed into the room. Ah, uh, and that's when they found that the victim was already dead, correct? Hmm. I believe this is one of the most open and shut cases I've ever presided over. Floor plans of the crime scene added to the court record. A diagram of the channeling chamber. So, how was the victim killed? I was about to get to that. Stop wasting my time, then. Poor Gumshoe. Witness testimony. Cause of death. The direct cause of death was a pistol shot to the forehead, sir. Shot was fired from point-blank range. Before the victim was shot, sir, he was stabbed in the chest. The wound was very severe, but not enough to cause instantaneous death. The murderer used the pistol to finish the victim off after the stabbing. Hmm. So the victim was stabbed before being shot. This is the victim's autopsy report, sir. Things we should have had before this moment. Autopsy report added to the court record. Uh, Dr. Gray's autopsy report after being stabbed in the chest, he was shot in the forehead at point blank. Okay. The court accepts it into evidence. Mr. Wright, you may question the witness. Okay. So I believe because we have no evidence and our character is an idiot, I think we need to press as many statements as we can here. <laughs> Let's press about the direct cause of death. Because you might have noticed... If we go into the presentation, here's the mindset you have to go into the game. Even though they told us this, until it ends up in the evidence folder, we can't reference it. So at some point, we need him to talk about the pistol and potentially the knife. And both of those things probably should end up in the evidence. So because we don't have those, let's press to hopefully get them so we can potentially open up a hole in the testimony. Let's press. Hold it. The murder weapon, Detective Gumshoe. Whose pistol was it? It was the victim's. The victim? Now, why would he have... Objection! Why would he have a pistol? Who cares? The point that you are missing is whose fingerprints are on that pistol. Been already paying attention to that. Then I suggest you start over. Fingerprints? There were fingerprints? Along with the victim's. The defendant Maya Faze were also in the grip, sir. Bang. Hmm. So the defendant's fingerprints were left on the murder weapon. Ugh. Walk right into her hands there. Shot was fired from point blank range. That's fine. We didn't lose health, so we'll just keep pressing. Why would he have a pistol? Who cares? Whatever, wit. Who's gonna stop me? Next question. Pretty much. Point blank, huh? It's about how far away is that? It's anywhere between 12 to 20 inches away. How do you know he was shot at point blank? Tsk, 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 Mr. Phoenix Wright. That's probably my favorite pose of hers, where she waggles the figure. I grow tired of the foolish foolery, of the foolish fools of this foolish country. Excuse me? Gunpowder burn. Gunpowder burn? When something is shot from point blank, a burn area is left around the bullet hole. Gunpowder exploding is what makes a bullet fire. And that gets real hot, pal. 
and there were definitely some gunpowder burns left on the victim's forehead. Wow, never knew that. Live and learn, I guess. Uh-oh, Sonic reference intensifies. But before the victim was shot, sir, he stabbed in the chest. Well, so far we're still not getting any evidence, which is a bit concerning. So we're gonna press it, withhold it here. Stabbed. What was he stabbed with? A fruit knife. I see. And whose knife was it? Looks like it belonged to the face, sir. Of course, my face fingerprints are all over it. Hmm. All over it, huh? Ugh. This does not look good. <laughs> what will you do now, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Okay, so they're saying the wound was very severe. Um... I don't know if I need to follow up on that one. We already have something on the death report. I think this is what we need to press. I'm gonna skip the other statement. Hold it. Are you sure he was stabbed first, then shot? Yup, sure as can be. One well, look at the wounds and you come to the same conclusion too, pal. A fool is a fool who will only listen to the foolish opinions of other foolish fools. A pistol shot to the forehead. A point blank is certainly enough to kill instantly. Does it matter then which was first? Think a little more before you open that big mouth of yours, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Ugh, what a pain. Oh no, chat, what a pain. Bang. That's enough. We have clearly established how the victim was murdered. I brought the two murder weapons with me today. Ah, uh, what a pain. Very well. The court accepts them into evidence. What a pain indeed, chat. Murder weapon was grazed, two fire shot, bears my and grazed fingerprints. This lad is to the court record. Knife, murder weapon, small fruit knife, belongs to the face, bears my fingerprints. Richard says Winston. Hmm. The date and time of death was June 19th at 3.15 p.m. Eyewitnesses claim to have heard two gunshots at this time. And two murder weapons, both with the defendant's fingerprints on them, huh? Winston Payne. You're wide open! Oh, thank you for the follow, which, uh... Richard. He, I mean, he was in the first case. If you're talking about the voice of what a pain, that was not him. Hmm. This does seem like an open and shut case. Naturally. This is going from bad to worse. As if the summary just wasn't oversimplifying things to the extreme. Your Honor, feel free to slam that little gavel of yours. After all, there's no room left for doubt, is there? That is quite true, Mr. Wright. Yes? Oh, you're talking about the, the what a pain. Oh, and now I understand. <clears throat> yes? Even in the face of all this, do you still wish to plead not guilty? It's the opinion of this court that if you do not adjust your plea, you stand to lose. See, just as promised, Mr. Phoenix Wright, you would change your plea in less than 10 minutes. What will you do, Mr. Wright? Will you change to justified self-defense? Because now would be the time to do so. This is your final chance. This is a huge decision. Better think this through all the way. Well, I mean, they told us to plead not guilty, so we're pleading not guilty. We plead justified self-defense. We'd basically be confessing to murder. After the trial, Maya's life would be ruined. She'd be labeled a murderer. I can't let that happen. Indeed, what a Winston pain. Your Honor, have you reached a conclusion, Mr. Wright? The defense will not change its plea. We will accept nothing short of complete acquittal. And we got whipped. <laughs> you. You have sealed your fate, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Detective. I I yes, sir. Present the final portion of your testimony. The final strike. 
Um, yes, sir. N now, now, see here. Proceedings are run by... And he got whipped. Uh-uh. Oh, yes, of course. Go ahead, detective, and give your testimony. I think the court would like to hear about the other piece of incriminating evidence. You know what's really funny is if she just let him bang the gavel, the case would have been over there. I'm really not sure why she decided to continue there, to be honest. I feel like that's not in her best interests. But whatever, incriminating evidence. Sorry, pal, but there's an even more incriminating piece of evidence. This is the costume the defendant was wearing at the time of the crime. As you can see, it's covered in blood. The defendant attacked and killed a person who, without a doubt, was not fighting back. So, this is the costume. There certainly is evidence of a Beck spray of blood on this. This piece directly links Maya Fey to the crime, sir. I see. This court accepts this into evidence. Maya's costume added to the court record. Clothes Maya was wearing at the time of the murder, there are blood splatters on it. Hmm. Okay. All right, Mr. Wright. Maya's fingerprints on both the murder weapons and blood splatters on her clothes. Did this situation get any worse? Huh. What's wrong? You seem to be at a loss. I think this is the last piece of testimony the prosecution should have to offer. Feel free to sulk off with your tail between your legs, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Please stop calling me by my full name. It's disturbing. Okay, chat. So let's see. Let's hear about the testimony. So, we already know about the criminal case the evidence. We're never going to press on statements like that. Uh, was wearing at the time of the crime. Maybe. I might revisit that. As you can see, it's covered in blood. Mmm, no. Defendant attacked and killed the person who, without a doubt, was not fighting back. Actually, well... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I think I'm making an assumption here. Let's go back to the piece of evidence more specifically. I think I do need to press on this. I'd like to... Be, so basically, here's where we need to go from the standpoint of the game. We need to prove that something happened. It wasn't just straight up a murder. So inevitably, we need to push on this statement. But I think we need the evidence to be a bit more clear. So if you remember, for example, from earlier, we know there's a bullet hole that's low on the ground that's not really explained how it got there. So in order to kind of poke holes in things, we need to scrutinize every piece of evidence that we have. So I think we need to scrutinize the costume first before I get ahead of myself, I guess is what I'm saying. So let's see if we can get more information about the costume. That might enlighten us as to what was happening here. So let's press here. There's blood on the costume. Lab results show that it is the victim's blood. That's fine. Bang, chat. Hmm. So there is blood from the victim on the defendant's clothes. Definitely not good. So were there any other clues you could glean from this piece of evidence? Because, like, what I can say from, like, I don't remember what we're getting out of this, but potentially what we need to have proof of is, uh, things like... If this was what she was wearing, does it have, like, the gunpowder on it? We have to kind of put ourselves in, like, a detective mode here. So if he doesn't admit that there's gunpowder or if they're saying that there's some issue with the clothes in general, uh, that's where we might have an opening. So that's where I'm looking to push before we go into that other statement. Because then I could potentially present something like, uh, you know, one of those pieces of evidence. But anyway, let's see if we get any information from this. Um, well... Objection! If you must change the topic, the good detective here must testify again. But too bad. Not enough time. Let's move on. Oh yes, Miss Von Karma is perfectly correct. Ugh, I mean the judge is on her side. Yeah, I don't think that's how that works. But if I bite off more than I could chew here, what should I do? Well, we need to press further. Why is Miss Von Karma suddenly putting up resistance? 
There must be a reason as to why she suddenly threw out an objection like that. Oh, well, now I can see it. Never mind, chat. <laughs> Never mind. There is something about the costume. I didn't see it the first time. I'm sure chat now sees it if they also missed it. I, I will direct chat's attention to a very mysterious hole <laughs> in the uh, robe portion of the left arm. So anyway, that that's one of the things I was looking for. So this should be good enough then. <laughs> if we could get them to update the evidence, because that's the thing. We technically have it if we were to present it in the other pieces of the argument because of the fact we don't have it specifically stating there's a bullet hole or something else is wrong with the clothes, we would get a penalty. So that, that's where my train of thought was going, chat. We needed something about this to change in order to present this. I just have to look harder. Y yeah, Phoenix, it's like right on the sleeve. Mr. Wright, Miss Von Karma's logic is perfect. There is no way for you to poke a hole in it, which is ironic given it's a bullet hole. Ugh. Looks like my time is up. So about the costume. Uh, well, we're gonna say there is one little thing. Your Honor. Actually, there is something very wrong with this piece of evidence. It's actually kind of deceptive, because when you look in the court record for it, it doesn't actually show you that, but the other image does show you that. So I feel that's a bit misleading. Especially for first-time players. What? What are you talking about, pal? Where is this problem you're talking about? I've come this far. There's no turning back now. The problem I have with the piece of evidence is here. We're gonna poke a hole in the evidence chat, literally. Take that! Ask the court to please take a look at the sleeve of this costume. The sleeve? There's a tiny hole here. Uh, a hole? Well, that wasn't in the report. Hold on. What's this around the hole? It smells faintly of gunpowder. Gunpowder? No one ever told me. A hole that smells of gunpowder. Looks like I found the hole I was looking for. Okay. I need to have the laugh track prep for moments like that, Chad. We need the laugh track. Your Honor, the only logical conclusion you can make is that this must be a bullet hole. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, order. This is a very grave matter. It's best we correct the court record first before anything else. Okay, now, now we have what we need to press the other statement. Sorry about that. Guess we messed up, sir. Is she actually smiling? What else is she hiding? Pull yourself together, detective. That tiny hole doesn't change a thing. The strength of the evidence still holds. Continue with your testimony. That just now was a fluke. Nothing more. Objection! Objection! How can you say something like that? This is a huge oversight. Well, I agree it is a mistake on the part of the police. What Prosecutor Von Karma has said is true. The evidence still stands. Do not find a more definitive problem with the evidence, then. No way! Detective Gumshoe, please continue with your testimony. Y yes sir Okay, so now, now we're gonna insert the idea that the defendant was in a scuffle. Whether or not that's what actually happened, we're removing the helpless killing narrative. So they're going to have to clarify and retestify. So let's poke a hole in it with the literal hole and present the costume. Objection! Objection. Detective Dick Gumshoe. Y yes? <laughs> Having you call me by my full name is kind of a weird feeling. You said that my client killed a person who was, without a doubt, not fighting back. Yeah, I did. Then what, may I ask, is the bullet hole you police overlooked supposed to mean? Uh, um, what does it mean? I'll tell you what it means. It means the victim had fired off a shot. 
Is this what it means to not fight back? Ah, uh, you're right. It seems you are correct. If the victim had tried to shoot the defendant, then it would change everything. All right, the wind seems to be shifting. Huh. Miss with that, are you finished yet, Laugh? Are you finished yet, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Miss Von Karma? It seems that Maya Fey was shot at by the victim. However, that is only grounds enough to support a justified self-defense plea. That is correct. But I'm sure you remember, Your Honor, what the defense clearly said. Judge is only taking her side because he's scared of being whipped. I mean, pretty much. That they rejected justified self-defense and pleaded not guilty. Ah! Uh, now that you... Why, that's right! Whip. Which means the defense has yet to prove anything at all. No! Well, yes, that's true. Furthermore, just the fact that there is a bullet hole in the costume is not enough to substantiate even a plea of justified self-defense. Huh? How so? Ah! Don't just stand there. Hurry up and tell the court what transpired that day. With the new information we acquired added in, of course. Huh? You mean by myself? You want me to put together the scenario all by myself? Ah! Yes, sir. Right away, sir. What transpired? During the channeling, the defendant saw her chance to stab the victim in the chest. Of course, the victim used the last of his strength to fight back, sir. While the two were fighting, the victim took out his gun. The victim took a shot, but because they were too close, he missed. The defendant then picked up the on the opening, took the victim's gun, and ended it. Hmm. This scenario you have put together does make sense. This judge is an idiot, chat. Listen, he should be he should be sued. All of his cases should be removed and considered invalid. They should all be retried. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Wright, on the surface, it does seem to make sense. No, it doesn't. Wait, no, that... Oh, okay, chat. There, there, I know sometimes, like, the game wants you kind of think, like, where the contradiction was. But, like... When you have to present literally almost the same piece of evidence that we just used a moment ago to disprove it, I'm like, are they not paying attention? I swear, chat, whatever. However, I won't give up that easily. But please refrain from glaring at me like that. Now then, your cross-examination, please. Just go with it, Aji is the best judge ever. So anyway, chat, as you probably have guessed from the statements, and why I'm kind of annoyed that we have to do this is, you know, we're not going to we're not going to talk about the two we're fighting. So, like this, this literally just happened. We, we literally just talked about how they could smell gunpowder on it. So. OK, I'm just going to present the costume again because someone wasn't paying attention. I'm just going to present it. Objection. Missing the tiny hole in this costume will be the prosecution's undoing. Huh? What do you mean? This little hole has actually created a huge hole in your testimony. Explain yourself, Mr. Wright. You said the two of them were fighting when the victim fired his gun at point blank. If that were true, then where is the gunpowder burn on this costume? G gunpowder burn i know it's like <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like we like they drew attention to the gunpowder but we didn't see the burn mark it's just one of those things where it's like i'm just kind of like okay it's fine well, well i guess we already mentioned before we're going to use the folding screen at some point so we're waiting for naturally for them to ask us where it came from and when we get to that point we'll present the folding screen 
Because every other piece of evidence is irrelevant at the moment. Like, like, what would the point of presenting the murder weapon at this moment be? So unfortunately, the game did not give us a lot of evidence to actually work with. Most of this is just kind of... I'll call it investigation evidence. So if you look at like what reasonably we should present in terms of the, the trial itself, we only have the folding screen, the key, which they haven't even asked about the door or the lock, so we can't present that. The floor plans, which is not relevant because they've not talked about the floor. We could ask about the, the gunpowder residue technically, and we really don't want to draw attention to the murder weapons at the moment. Welcome, Nango. So anyway, we're just waiting for our moment to either press for the folding screen or get an update on another piece of evidence. That's pretty much it at this point. This is what you testified earlier. Something is shot from the point blank. A burn area is left around the bullet hole. Whoa! There's not a single trace of gunpowder burn on this costume. Oh, wrong person talking. Let me try that again. But there's not a single trace of gunpowder burn on this costume. <laughs> I went full detective voice there. Bang, chat. That is a very good point. And what exactly does this mean? It means that when the shot was fired, they're standing apart from each other. Hmm. Objection. I'm disappointed, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Hope you're doing well, Dango. You think you could punch a hole in my logic with this? With wishy-washy thinking like that, anyone can explain anything away. Then I implore you to disprove my line of thinking. Let's see. In the middle of their fight, the victim pushed the defendant away. And it was then, when they were separated, that he fired. How was that? Objection! Objection. We shake our head. Trial's going okay. We literally just started the trial. Although, I think we're getting, getting close to a break in the trial, since we need them to re-examine the evidence. As if that was even possible. According to the testimony, the wound from the stabbing was very severe. The victim would not have had the strength to push the defendant very far after that. Oop. Shocked face. Yes. Well, then... That's right. The defendant must have pushed the victim away. Just stabbing him, she must have put some space between the doctor and herself. Then while she was preparing to strike again, the doctor took his shot. There. That should satisfy even you. I think I talked about this before. It's not specific to her, but I find it really funny. I feel like Japan in particular likes talking about satisfying other people. Take that as you will. This is not like the first character of many characters we've talked to across many games where they're talking about whether or not it would satisfy somebody. The phrasing is very interesting every time. Hmm. That does make an awful lot of sense. What do you think, Mr. Wright? Must be careful. Can't afford to make a mistake here. Concentrate and think. Well, we can't we can't agree with her. We're gonna say something doesn't make sense. There is a fatal flaw in her argument, Your Honor. Fatal? Flaw? Yo! Very interesting. I would love to see where this flaw is. Show me something that contradicts my explanation. There we go. Now we can present the folding screen. There has to be a stag in her explanation somewhere. She put some distance between them before rushing to make the final blow. When she was about to strike, the doctor took his shot. There must be a piece of evidence that contradicts the line of- It's the folding screen. Take that! This is the piece of evidence that destroys your logic. What is that? A folding screen? I would like to point the court's attention to the hole in this folding screen. Ah. Uh. Looks like you already know what I'm talking about. Who? Where? What? Mr. Wright, your explanation, please. Are these two really that clueless? Yes, Phoenix. Yes, they are. <laughs> oh, oh, Dango. Yes. Just you wait. If we happen to go back before we end the session, just wait till you see where this totally traditional American folding screen was. The bullet went through the defendant's sleeve first, then the folding screen. It passed through at a height of approximately 8 inches off the ground, which means... When the shot was fired, Maya, I mean the defendant, was not getting ready to strike, but was actually squatting low to the ground. Oh, okay, you're aware? I wasn't sure if you played through this game or not. 
bang. Order, order. This changes everything. I think that's his new catchphrase, Chad. Please look at this diagram of the crime scene. The victim, Dr. Gray, was here when he fired the shot. And the bullet hit this folding screen. Oh, you played through the whole series? Nice. I couldn't remember who said they played through to the end. Sorry about forgetting that. I believe you did mention it last time. Maybe not specifically to Spirits, but that you played at least the trilogy. It hit at this location, about 8 inches off the ground. At this time, the defendant was in this area. Uh... I mean... I want to point to somewhere else. For me, this is a 50-50. See, the problem is, is I'm pretty sure I know how this was done. So it's like, do I point it where I think it really is or where he thinks it should be? Oh no, I'm hit with the mix-up. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> this is much harder than it seems. <laughs> I have to think about this. I'm not sure which one the game expects me to guess at this point. I'm going to guess... I wasn't super paying attention to the order. Do you say it hit her and then the folding screen? If that's the case, I'm going to guess the game thinks I'm going to place here. So I'm going to say take that here. Somewhere around here. Uh-oh, the judge's face scrunched like he just smelled some serious bad breath. Uh, um, that is, I mean... Oh. Okay, so that's not where they wanted me to point. Okay, then let me point at the other area and see if that if it wants to go there. I wasn't sure if the game wanted me to jump there. I could be real with you for a second. Wait, I just realized I forgot to brush this morning. Excuse me while I freshen up. Uh, sure. In the meantime, I want you to think things through again, Mr. Wright. Ah, oh, of course. Whoops. What's done is done for now. Focus on where Myra was at the time of the crime. Okay, let me point where I was going to point, but I wasn't sure for where it wanted to go. I think it wants me to then point here, potentially. Here! Behind the folding screen. I, I wasn't sure, chat. I was like, that was kind of meta-knowledge. It was kind of meta-knowledge. I wasn't sure if I was supposed to guess that. So that was more of a, oops, that's what you get for playing the game ahead of time and forgetting. <laughs> I, I deserve that strike. I earned it. <laughs> I got whipped. Ah! The victim and his attacker were fighting, were they not? Then what would the attacker be doing all the way back there? It's easy, the, he, the, the attacker wasn't there. Um... Besides which, if the attacker was behind the folding screen, then how could the victim even know where to shoot? It's obviously impossible. Yeah, I guess so. Mr. Wright. Boy, did I just screw up royally? What's done is- oh wait, it doesn't want that there either? Oh. Which is very ironic given what happens later in this testimony. Um... Now I actually genuinely don't know where it wants me to put it. I'm gonna be real with you. <laughs> so I chose a meta- I chose a meta knowledge where that definitely is where something will happen. So if it didn't want in front of the screen or behind the screen, did it literally want me to point at the bullet hole? Hmm. Maybe? Maybe it wants- Maybe I just didn't point close enough to it? I feel like if I point it like right here and then I get it right, I will be kind of annoyed. Because I pointed in here, which is not that far from here. So what if I just try like barely touching it and seeing what happens? Something like this, maybe? Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I feel- okay, I'm gonna be like, come on, come on, game, come on. I was pretty close the first time. Wait a second. We know the defendant was close to the ground based on the height of the bullet hole. But how could you gauge the distance from that? Isn't it possible the defendant was standing much closer to the victim? It is very picky picky. I don't feel like I was that far away. I was like maybe about a centimeter and a half, two centimeters. It was not that horribly far away. 
It was even on past the box, which was the other thing I was trying to make sure it happened. Oh, well. At least we got to see extra dialogue, which is interesting. I didn't realize you actually did get extra dialogue if you choose behind the curtain. Isn't it possible the defendant was standing much closer to the victim? That's impossible. But, but why? You, of all people, should know the answer to that question, Miss Von Karma. If she were shot from somewhere else, there would be gunpowder burns present. However, there is nothing of the sort around the bullet hole of this costume. Ah! Curse you, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You. Hmm. I believe it has now been proven that the defendant was standing away from the victim when she was shot at. What? Do you think this has changed the defendant's situation? Well, to quote the judge, we're going to say it changes everything. Richard says, does Francesca dye her hair? Does, he, does it actually grow in that color? Knowing Phoenix Wright's world, probably. It probably is in that color. I think there's a flashback at some point in the future. I don't know if it was this game or a future game. It shows her as a kid, so if her hair color is also that color, I'm just going to go with it's her natural hair color. Chad also saying, remember watching his hero mistook the background for powder burns? Ooh, interesting. Honestly, Your Honor, this changes everything. The prosecution has claimed the defendant was aimed was aiming to kill by stabbing. If that were true, delivering the final strike with the knife would be ideal. However, where and what was the defendant doing at that time? Squatting all the way by the folding screen. Exactly. And Maya Faye was the real murderer. Why would she be by the folding screen instead of preparing to strike? Ugh. Upon further consideration, it does make very little sense. Yeah, I figured there had to be a reason. Figuring things out and proving the logic behind everything is your job. Oof. All right. With this, the rest of the trial should be in the b. Finger wag chat. Last radius of disaster. You are such a smart man, Mr. Phoenix Wright. To think that you've been able to take a completely hopeless case to this point. Now I know why Papa had a tough time with you. Mmm, you amuse me. Ugh, of all the things to inherit, why did it have to be that smarmy smile? Detective, how dare you damage my perfect logic? Uh-huh, how is it all my fault? You could start repairing your standing by first removing that three-stand goatee. Oh, and rest assured, your punishment will come later. P punishment Well then, Your Honor, I think we've had all I can take of this detective's face. I think it's time to call in the next witness. Next witness? It's gotta be Lada. Very well. The court will take a five-minute recess. After we reconvene, we will hear from the next witness. Bang, chat. Saving content. I think we'll at least do another trial. It's still a little early to call it quits. I'm gonna go like another 45 minutes, see where that takes us. June 21st, 11.37 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby, number three. Phew, that was a close one. I know you were giving it your all to defend me. I could feel the death penalty hanging in the air. Felt like I was pretty close to dying myself. That might be wounds from the whip, Phoenix. You should probably go to the nurse or something after this. But you were wonderful out there. Oh, it's Pearl again. You listened carefully, made theories, and tricked everyone into believing you. Okay, the tricked everyone did make me laugh a little bit. I'll give her that. Thanks. Oh, wait. Tricked? You must be the lawyer's... That must be the lawyer's secret technique, right? Oh, she's not wrong. By the way, is the next witness who I think it is? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Lotta Hart. 
Oh, guess there's no escaping her, huh? Remember, Nick, you promised you'd save me. If you lose, me and my sister's ghost will come after you and haunt you. You heard it, chat. We're being threatened again. Also, does Maya even have money to pay legal fees? Especially after the, uh, what was it? 100 ways to make money saying that was in their dojo. Your sister? Uh, are you talking about Mystic Mia? Yeah. Do you remember her, Pearly? My sister was a super good lawyer. She was also Nick's teacher. Oh. I didn't know that. I think she seems disappointed. June 21st, 11.43 a.m. Just a quirk. Courtroom number two. Bang, bang, chat. Court will now reconvene. Now the first order of... And he got whipped. Ow! I don't want to hear it, old man. After I call my witness, sit there quietly and watch like a good little boy. Y -y yes sir Bring in the photographer who witnessed the channeling. Well, witnessing is a strong word. Took two photos, that was about it. Witness, your name and occupation if you please. How many counts of battery will occur? I mean, she should just be jailed at this point. Let's see, ass assault with weapon. <laughs> Actually, well, I guess, I guess it would be assault and battery because she threatened physical harm. So many charges, chat. I mean, she's hit the judge several times, if nothing else. Hey, Phoenix, how you doing? Just fine. Sorry about this. Didn't exactly have a choice, you know. Yowza! Name and occupation. I declare, what in tarnation? Hey, judge, this is violence against my fair self. That's fine. That's fine. That ain't fine. That's a whip. Yeah! There's no need for foolish outcries from foolishly foolish fools. <laughs> I was gonna say, list all the crimes. Count them all, chat. Count them all. Just hurry up and testify about what happened on the day of the murder. I haven't even gotten to say my name and job yet. Name's a lot of horror, paranormal photographer, and I'm here to testify. Now, now, let's all be one big happy family, okay? Okay. Well, we don't really have any new evidence, so I think we're just going to be pressing basically every statement. Because she wouldn't know anything about the clothes, so it doesn't make sense to reuse anything that we had there. Anyway, witnesses account. Only the doc. Only the doc and the defendant went into the channel and chamber. We were waiting outside the door and then bang, we heard this gunshot. Mr. Lawyer there broke the door down and we, rush we rushed into the room. Inside was the dead victim and the defendant waving her pistol around. I swear, other than those two, there were no one else in that room. And did you take a picture of the scene right after the murder took place? Reckon, of course. Huh? Excuse me? Reckon, course. Sure for you, reckon? Course I did. Yeah. Does it look like I care? Just hurry up and show your picture to the court. A moment of truth. What will be in that picture? Um, let's see here. This here's the picture. Ooh, interesting. So her back was towards the entrance. Hmm. Hmm. It would certainly seem that only the defendant and the victim were in that room. Honest photo. Adds to the court record. A picture taken at the murder scene.
Are you ready, Mr. Phoenix Wright? We'll clear all doubt about Maya through this cross-examination. Just watch me. Well, we're gonna watch him. So, as chat is probably guessing, here's my goal. As I said before, I don't remember the exact order of evidence, so we still haven't brought up the key. We need them to come into the point where someone at some point needs to admit that there's no way this key should have been able to leave the room. So in order to do that, we have to start poking holes in who was in the room and where people were. So until then, until we get the smoking gun, I guess, we're gonna keep pressing for more information. So he says only the doc and the defendant went into the chamber. I'm gonna press that because maybe we'll get something from it. Hold it. Was it really only those two that went in? Objection. What are you blabbering about? You were there too, were you not? Ugh. Why don't you answer that yourself? Is it really just the two of them? Yes. Dr. Gray and Maya were the only two into that went into that room. Oh, hold on. We can't have the defense testifying against its own client. Anyway, folks. Only the two of them went into the channeling chamber, you hear? But you knew that from the very beginning, didn't you? Witness, continue. Hmm. So I didn't get anything interesting out of that. So... I feel like this is the same issue that we had, at least in the first Phoenix Wright case, of the order of events of when people went into certain places. I won't go into more details there, but I'm very surprised at how easily Phoenix gave up that point, given the other cases we've already experienced. Anyway, we're waiting outside the door and then bang, we heard gunshot. Sure, let's press the statement. Hold it! Was it really a gunshot? Are you insane? Must have heard it as well. Ugh. Why don't you testify for the court, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Was it really a gunshot? Yes, I think it was something that sounded like a gunshot. And why are we listening to the defense testify? and the world becomes just a little crueler. I heard a gunshot a long time ago, so I know. When I tell you that was a gunshot I heard. Now then, this is where the story heats up. Hmm. Not really getting more information out of it, which is concerning. But we're not getting penalized, so I'm gonna keep pressing. Hold it. So let me get this straight. This Mr. Lawyer there broke the door down. Honestly, Mr. Phoenix Wright, why don't you tell us what happened then? Um, yes, Miss Von Karma. I broke the door down, sorry. Why does this feel like an inquisition? No need for apologizing, that was great. You're a real man. Oh, really? That's something I would have liked to see. The judge is smiling rather openly. I'll take that as a good sign. And, what did you see once you broke in? Okay. I, I hope we at least get something for waving the pistol around. Let's press. Hold it. Are you sure it was the defendant, Maya Fey? Sure, I'm sure. I mean, I guess maybe we could play into the angle that her physical appearance changed, so it could have been somebody else other than Maya. Maybe we could play into that angle into the trial. I mean, I don't think that would hold up in court, but you know, we gotta we gotta take baby steps, chat. <laughs> We need to we need to somehow interrupt the narrative and then get into an evidence gathering phase to either prove our theory or disprove the prosecution. Lada seems awfully confident in her testimony. Well, we definitely should press harder. Because if you remember when we left the building, she she herself was confused when we went to I think the place near the train station and seemed a bit confused whether or not it was Maya. So it might actually be worth pressing this. Lada. Please, think back to that day one more time. What you getting at? Remember what you said when we broke into the room? Oh, did she say something immediately? I remember Lada saying something immediately. I know she said something at the train station, though. I was murdered. Flick. Lada, at a time like this, times like this are perfect for snapping up shots. But anyway, what's going on here? This gal. Is she Maya? Oh, that is true. She did say that line. That's fine. That also works. When you saw the murder at that time, you couldn't even tell if it was Maya Faye or not. Am I correct? 
Um, well, you see. Bang. Order! Miss Hart, you are here to present accurate testimony. Yeah, uh, so sorry. Good. Shifts things back to my side. For a defense lawyer, your defense is terribly lacking, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Gasp. Witness, think back to when those two entered the channeling chamber. When they entered? One of those people that entered the chamber was Maya Fey, correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was Maya that went in. Hmm, it looks like we've come to a collective conclusion. The person in this picture is most certainly Maya Fey. Exactly. Rats, and I'm trapped like one. Again! I swear, unlearn those two, there was no one else in the room. Rats? Hold it. Are you absolutely certain of that? Sure I am. That old witch chest is out of the room, so... Old witch. Does she mean Morgan Fay? There was no one else in there, you know it. The channeling chamber was very dark, almost pitch black. Was there really no one else in there? What about... Okay, our options are behind the folding screen, behind the door, under the flooring. That's a good one. No, she's not some kind of horror monster. Anyway, we're gonna say behind the folding screen because it's the most obvious of the choices. What about behind the folding screen? Did you check back there? Wreck it, given. Huh? What in the? Wreck given, you know. You reckon, that's a given. Took me, I took me a good look around the room once. There ain't no, no way anyone was hanging out behind that folding screen. Mm -hmm. If I may have a word with you, Miss Hart. Well, what? You got a problem? Wreck given. I mean, I am having a little difficulty in understanding you. You would stop saying wreck give Ah! Oh. Now then, Mr. Phoenix Wright, do you see a problem with the testimony, or don't you? Ah, oh. just as I thought, there's nothing wrong with her testimony. I was with her, so I know she's telling the truth. Enough. It's contagious, apparently. Wreck given, chat. It seems there are no issues with Miss Hart's testimony. At the time of the crime, only two people were in the channeling chamber. The victim, Dr. Turner Gray, and the defendant, Maya Fay. Hmm. The face of the defendant cannot be verified in this picture. However, we think about the circumstances, it would have to be the defendant. What am I gonna do? I just let this go. What is it, Mr. Wright? You look as if you have something to say. I make one wrong move. I'm gonna have the judge against me. Is there anything I can present that would prove it's not Maya in that photo? So here's one of those things where I have technically looked at what I would like to present, but it is not in the evidence. So from having played this before, I know I don't have anything to present. So I'm going to choose can't present anything yet. But I will give chat a very big hint. We actually already interacted with something very suspicious while we were talking to people after the crime occurred. But let's choose not to present anything yet. Well, Mr. Wright, nothing, Your Honor. That's very smart of you, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You really should give up trying to prove this is not Maya Fey. I didn't say anything about giving up. I just don't have the right piece of evidence to prove my argument. Bang. That's enough. Is this it? Is this all I could do? I think it is quite obvious to this court that a verdict of not guilty is not possible. I told you. Totally 100% impossible. Miss Von Karma, do you have any further questions for this witness? Having established the defendant's guilt, further questioning won't be needed. What about the defense? No further questions, I presume. I... I couldn't protect Maya. The defense... The defense... Phoenix. Phoenix, you can't make that kind of face. 
And here, <clears throat> here we're coming to one of my least favorite parts of the game. Take a drink first. A lawyer is someone who smiles, no matter how bad it gets. Mia? I, okay. Elephant in the room, let's have, let's have a quick aside. I really don't like that they aged up the eight-year-old. I really don't like that she looks like that. I'm really not comfortable with it. I will, I will acknowledge this. This is one of the reasons I really don't like this character. Like, couldn't they just had another character of, like, more adult in age? It's just kind of creepy, honestly. <sighs> but anyway. Yeah, there, there's a lot of reasons I did initially give up on the Phoenix Wright series when I played through a long time ago. This is one of those scenes where I just looked at this and I was like, seriously? Japan, seriously? I'm very, disapp very disappointed in Japan. I'm just like... It's not appropriate. <laughs> it's really not. Japanese humor, everyone. I wish I would say this is the only time in this game that a very questionable age difference thing comes up, but I would be lying to you because I think that's literally the next case. And that case, I just remembered, is another reason why I also had a big problem with this game. So I'm going to take a deep breath. I'm going to pretend that maybe it's at least the older person in spirit. I mean, she's having the it's a thousand year old dragon syndrome, but she looks, you know, 16, except it's in reverse. She looks like the thousand year old damage dragon, but she is eight. So it's like it's one of those technicality things. I just I don't like it. I just don't like it, chat. I guess I made it just in time, wouldn't you say? Also, Chad, I already talked about this. I really hate that we have to get bailed out every time. <laughs> it's like, for me, I'm a strong, independent player. I do not like hand-holding in games like this. I don't mind it in, like, the investigation phase, but when it comes, like, to the actual trial, it feels really lame when someone has to step in and fix things for you. Not a fan of that. So you can imagine I was super disappointed when I first played this game, where I just basically went, Ugh, come on. Can you complete more than one case without an assistant? Please, I'm begging you, Phoenix. Please get through an entire trial without someone literally stepping in and telling you how to be a lawyer. It's ridiculous. So far, it has not really happened. Anyway, let's read the dialogue again as I try to ignore whatever you want to call this on our screen. I guess I made it just in time, wouldn't you say? You, but... Pearls? Her clothes are a bit small. Anyway. I, even that line, chat. Even that line. Let's see what Zero Raider is saying in the chat here. The only thing I will say in the devs' defense is they need to represent sphere possession. Someone in a simple expression change is not going to cut it. Kind of, but it's like this where you just age up the characters. This is how you solve all the problems. Just don't have, just don't have them, don't let them be eight year olds. It's that simple. <laughs> just, it's it's actually that simple. Just don't make it your plot. <laughs> anyway, what are you waiting for, Phoenix? Let's go. But but how? He's already taken away. Ta oh excuse me, she's already taken away every advantage. The advantage is still in your hand. Think carefully one more time about what you saw in the channeling chamber. Do you remember what you told me yesterday? D Dr. Gray! Are we flashbacking to the scene again? Okay, this also bothers me a lot. We literally, chat, we literally, literally flashback to this one objection ago. Equivalency. <laughs> Why is the game making us watch this a second time in a row? It, it literally, it literally just happened. <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> is it because of that save in between? They got to replay the flashback. And actually, that doesn't even make sense because that, uh, no, that doesn't even make sense because it was after the save point because it was literally the previous cross-examination. I'm not reading this dialogue. I'm not reading the dialogue. We've seen it a million times. You see, there is one final piece to this puzzle. Mia? Question Lada one more time, Phoenix. 
I don't know if she's doing it unconsciously or on purpose, but she's not testifying truthfully. Bang. Now then, this court would like to end the cross-examination period. Hold it! Please wait, Your Honor. Are we not going to address the fact that she just grew like twice her size? <laughs> the defense would like to request the witness testify one more time. So anyway, chat might have noticed she talked about taking a photo. So, oops. That's not true. Overruled. I'm afraid you're too late, Mr. Wright. The cross-examination has already ended. Furthermore, any unrelated- Ugh! Oh, it's fine. I'll allow another testimony. Avon Karma's case is perfect. Absolutely flawless. And what better time than this for you to see that? But, but, I mean, I have some place I must go after this. The judge is really the worst. <laughs> All right, I'll allow it. Miss Hart, hurry and give us another testimony. Well, heck, what am I supposed to talk about? Please tell us one more, once more what happened when you burst into the channeling chamber. Okay, you got it. See, you got through to the judge somehow, right? Not really, we got through to the prosecutor. Well, actually, it was Von Karma's whip that got through to him. It's all in Phoenix's head, that's true. Witnesses account, part two. When we broke into that room, all I could focus on was Maya. I was, uh, kind of scared of the dead body, so I didn't take a good look at it. I'm really bad when it comes to blood and ghost stuff. I still managed to point my camera at Maya and take a shot. Oops, contradiction chat. Nothing sounds different from before. Some parts of her testimony were very vague. I should press her on those sections. Struggle all you like as you taste the bitterness of your defeat. Well, amuse me with your useless questions, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I'm waiting. Well, if chat recalls, there was a click and then a click. And she took two photos. So we need to get her to admit the other photo into evidence. So let's press. Hold it! Two, right? Two what? Two shots. You took two shots. But only one has been submitted as evidence. Miss Hart, where is the other picture you've been withholding? Bang. No, no, no. You got it all wrong. It's not me. I didn't mean anything bad. No, it could be a little mean, but I ain't evil. Well, at least she knows herself. Then why have you not shown this other picture to the court yet? Well, ain't it obvious? The prosecutor woman told me to shut my trap about it. What? But... On karma! Bang, bang, bang. M -m -m Miss Von Karma, you, you, you're hiding critical evidence. Unforgivable, Von Karma. Depressing evidence like this. You're as bad as your father. Confront Francesca. Leave it to the judge. Ooh, ooh, that's a, ooh, that's a hot choice. Um, what did, what did I even choose in my original playthrough? I don't remember this chat. Uh, I'm going to take a moment to think. I'm just curious, chat. <laughs> do not leave it to the judge, says the chat. Do not do it. Well, now, now I have to do it. <laughs> Let's leave it to the judge, chat. Oh, I'm so mad that even my throat's clenching up. I better let the judge handle this. Miss Von Karma, would you care to explain yourself to this court? I thought this picture was not important, and thus felt no need to submit it. That's all. How could you think? The pictures were more or less the same, so why bother with the second? I mean, it's just so much more trouble than it's worth for me to submit this as evidence. More trouble than it's worth? How, how could you say that? You want to see it that badly? I'll submit it. On his photo number two, added to the court record, a picture, a picture taken at the murder scene.
Well, at least we could tell by the eyes that it looks somewhat similar to the nurse that they flashed a long time ago at this point, like maybe an hour and a half ago. But we see things are a little different in this image. Judge dot dot dots, though. <laughs> Wait, that actually works at Zero Raider. Well, what is this? What is this picture? It's obviously the second picture the witness took that day at the scene of the crime. Well, it's a little off center, but that's what you get for with a nervous amateur. Let me take one more look at this. Oh, I see. Oh yeah, that gave me what I needed. Um, I think the important point here is the person in this picture. Sort of, Judge, sort of. This is most definitely not Maya Fey. Photographic evidence says that all in Phoenixes and I've lied, oh no. What is the meaning of this? This might be the break I was looking for. Now, should I or should I not insist the person in this picture is not Maya? Um... I don't think we have evidence to prove it's not Maya yet. I think I have to select drop the issue here. I I'm like struggling to recall. I think I have to drop the issue here. It's no good. I've been through this so many times. This is not like you, Mr. Wright. Why are you not objecting? The person in this photo is clearly not the defendant, and yet... Ha ha ha. There is no way he can raise an objection and hope to live. Explain yourself. I mean, just look at the person next to us. What do you mean, explain yourself? Your Honor, I would like for you to take a look at this picture, or literally the person across from us. This was taken yesterday at the detention center's visitor's room. This is Mr. Phoenix Wright, and the defendant by a fay during his visit. Wait, where did that camera come from? Wait, what? <laughs> Excuse me? Where? <laughs> what? How did we not notice that sitting in the room? Maya Faye? But isn't this a totally different person? Whip. She looks this way because she's obviously in the middle of channeling a spirit. Yeah, obviously, duh. <laughs> right, chat? Bang, bang, bang. It's unbelievable that she can... Wait, so, like, has he not seen Maya at all during any of the first case? Or first cases? Commander Root was also a star of Destiny. Oh, no. The plot twist. So, like, does he still not see Pearl? <laughs> like, for example? I think this just opens up more questions than it answers, to be honest with you. Are we sure the judge can see us now? Yet, it is the truth. I'm telling you the judge is completely senile, that's true. When Maya Fey is in that state, she physically changes into the person she's calling. Miss Von Karma, a word if I may. Mia? Taking pictures of someone during a private visit is illegal. <laughs> you're, you're telling me? Surely you must know that picture can't be submitted as evidence. Obviously, I know this picture is illegal, but I never intended to submit it as evidence in the first place. I, I just took an illegal picture anyway and showed it off in court. Isn't that kind of like submitting the evidence if you showed it in court anyway? How does that work in the Phoenix Wright universe? Oh, I'm just going to show the judge and the jury and the defense attorney this photo, but it's not actually evidence. Gotcha. Like, what? This case, I swear, chat. What is she? From the moment I showed this picture to the court, this case became all mine. After all, this image has now forever been burned into the judge's mind. But you shouldn't be cons- I this, this is like one of those head-scratcher moments. <laughs> this is one of the many reasons I don't like this case. I'm like, she's just flagrantly, literally using illegal evidence, and she's now admitting to it, 
and she's also admitting the motive behind it. Yet we still continue with the trial because... I mean, you just be like, bang, bang, mistrial. Like, right? Like, right on the spot? I... I don't even have a single witty line. Well, that's because you're an idiot, Phoenix. It looks like we've been had. I don't claim to understand this, and I still cannot believe it. Are you saying that this person, this person is the defendant, Maya Faye? They give up here. The trial will end. But if I slip up and say something wrong, it will cost me. Is there any way I could prove the person in this picture is not Maya? And I feel like... And I feel like this is also where I definitely got points off when I first played this game. So like chat, it just let, let's just walk through like the first person's impression when you play this game. So if you had chosen to not drop the issue, you would be penalized because you didn't drop the issue. So now if you were to play to this point and you're asked whether or not you can prove it, I feel like the gut instinct of most players is to say you can't prove it because you didn't prove it in the prior statement when you selected it then. But Phoenix right logic, we can prove it. So whatever, we'll, we'll prove it. <laughs> it's just... Your Honor. Oh, the fire has returned to your eyes, I see. This picture. And then this picture lies a critical contradiction to the all the testimony up until now. Like, maybe it's that kind of order of operations thing, but that always bothers me about the Phoenix Wright games. A contradiction. So, you think you've spotted a problem with this picture? Then earn your keep. Okay, so now that we're at least at the picture, Chat might have noticed something. Her sleeve is missing a bullet hole. Oops. I think I could do it anywhere in here and it should be fine. I'm going to hope it's not that picky. If it's going to be like, oh, why'd you point at the sleeve? I'm going to get very annoyed. Take that. <laughs> Take that. Please direct your attention here. To the sleeve. But there isn't anything odd about it. And that is exactly what is so odd. Something that should be there is suddenly missing. Should be there. Ugh. There was a bullet hole in the sleeve of the defendant's costume. If that's the case, then it should be in this picture as well. Oops. Bang. Miss Von Karma, you, you, you intended to hide this valuable piece of evidence. You will most certainly be assigned a penalty for this. All right, we should do some major damage to our argument. Don't celebrate yet. You like to bring down the mood, don't you? Take a look at Mas Von Karma's face. Ugh, she's got that condescending grin plastered all over her face again. Tsk tsk, jumping the gun again, I see. Your honor. I would like to extend an apology on behalf of those incompetent fools. But what do you mean? And what incompetent fools? Honestly, everybody that's entered the courtroom, judge. Maybe, maybe even, yeah, even the bailiff. I mean, I'm including the bailiff too. He, he's done a terrible job for checking for weapons. He's not doing his duty, chat. If those fools down at the precinct hadn't missed the bullet hole, I would have gotten a report about it. As I didn't, I could not have known that this picture was any value to this case. Hmm, I see. She's lying through her teeth, I know it. That woman knew about everything. The bullet hole, the picture, everything. But you can't prove that. Francesca von Karma's idea of a perfect case is quite fascinating, don't you think? Your Honor, you need not worry. You must assign a penalty. I'll personally make sure that detective gets what gets what's coming. Oh no, Chad, as she stretches the whip. I'm sure there will be a great gnashing of teeth at his next salary discussion. Poor Gumshoe. Bang. In any case, this is a very big problem. When the defendant was taken into custody, her costume had a bullet hole in the sleeve. However, 
From this photo, it would appear that right after the shooting, there was none. The judge is confused by the strange twist of events. This is your chance, Phoenix. Load all you got into this one shot, all right? Got it. Watch this, Maya. Your Honor. There is only one logical explanation for the contradiction. Ooh. Let's see what our options are here, chat. This picture is a fake. I mean, in modern society, this would actually be a legit, <laughs> legit argument in court. Like, like, I know that's not the right answer, but like today, in today's society, this absolutely is. The bullet hole was made later. Hmm, interesting. But I think we can disprove that from the fact that she never really left the room and the police apprehended her afterwards. So both these two are out. So what we're trying to do is insert another person into the scenario. So we're going to say the shooter is someone else. The defendant's sleeve had a bullet hole in it. However, this person clearly does not. There could be only one explanation. The person who shot Dr. Gray was not the defendant, but a different person altogether. What? She's indeed sweating. We have her on the ropes, chat. Bang, bang, bang. Order, order, order. If order is not restored, I will suspend this trial. Ow! Ah! Why me? The defense's... The defense's argument is a complete mess. Forgot Lotta was still in the courtroom. Yeah, pretty much. Look at her bang the table chat. Angry bangs. A complete mess. I fail to see how. Please, enlighten us. Hey, witness. Ah! Uh, what the heck? Send any way to ask a gal a favor. Be quiet, you. You were the one who said it was only the two of them when you entered the room. Well, you know, you were lying. I swear that my whip will be the last thing you see. Well, she's just straight up death threatening people in front of the judge. Well, just add that to the crimes, Chan. Look, sis, you're looking mighty scary. So why don't we say you? Hello? I swear I wasn't lying or nothing. Was anyone else in there honest? You see, now riddle me this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Is she turned into the Riddler? Why, why riddle me this? What? Where did the defendant vanish to? Where did this other woman appear from? Um, why is it lately all I want to do is cry? Can we put her on trial? She needs to pay for her crimes. Well, if the person in this picture is not the defendant, then this poses two very big questions. First, where did the defendant vanish to? And second, where did this person come from? That's right. Now hurry up and answer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Leave her for Batman to deal with, pretty much. Come on, you can't fall apart here, Phoenix Wright. I made like three key puns. You should know the answer to this next question. I can't believe that even Mia's calling me by my full name. But, I mean, how am I supposed to prove something like this? Are you being serious, Phoenix? If only you had the key? Like, facepalm moment, chat. This is a facepalm moment. <laughs> like, it, like, we just, she, she told us before the trial. This isn't even like a mystery. They just straight up told us the answer. You're killing me, Phoenix. Had enough yet, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Oh, I've had enough of Mr. Phoenix Wright. Or do you think you have enough in you to turn things around even now? To turn things around? That's right. Mia would always turn things around and change her perspective. Phoenix? So, where did this intruder appear from? And where did Maya disappear to? I need to look at this situation from a different angle. Let's see. What if before we broke in, the third person was already in the room? Oh, now? Now we're having this theory? <laughs> Phoenix, come on. What if Maya had left that room somehow? Gee, chat, how could she have left? I could prove that either one of those conditions were true. Mr. Wright, let's hear what you've come up with. 
think what happened before we force our way into the channeling chamber is... Uh... See, this is one of those ones where... My, my gut feeling when I first played the game, I remember selecting this option. And I can tell you from experience, it is not this option, which is very frustrating given what happens later in the case. We can't say something I can't explain yet because we have to use the key somehow. So we, so I think if we answer this, the game thinks you are thinking from the standpoint that during the channeling itself, someone else had entered and they'll counter with the plans, if I remember correctly, which is not what was being implied a moment ago in Phoenix's conversation. So just another reason I really don't like this case in particular, but we're gonna say Maya had left the room. Maya had left the channeling chamber at some point. The defense can prove this. Oh, how a foolish fool makes a foolish face while dreaming foolishly foolish dreams. Maya Fey was being looked after by her aunt, Morgan Fey. The chances of her leaving that crime scene is lower than that detective's salary. Anyway, let's see some evidence. Move that from the murder until the time of arrest. The defendant had left the room. I'm presenting the key chat. Miss Hart, do you remember this key? Um, well, I've seen it. Hey, that's the channel and chamber key, right? Before the channel and started, Maya locked the room from the inside with that. The defendant herself locked the door. Yeah, that's why we all couldn't get the door open. That key's the only one of its kind, after all. Oh. One of a kind, you say? Uh-oh. Wait, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Yes. It looks like she's catching on. I'm afraid to ask, but... Why is that key currently in your possession? Huh? What do you mean? Maya Fey locked herself in. The key should have been with her. Yes, agreed. However, she did not have the key at the time of her arrest. Ah, oh, well, ain't that a kick? So how come you're holding it? I got this as a present from a certain little girl who's taller than me and honestly surprised no one in the court has mentioned this. And that little girl was nowhere near the cre excuse me, near the crime scene at that time. That's preposterous. This means that Maya, Maya Fey must have left the room. She had not. That'd be holding this key you see before you. No! Bang, bang, bang. Uh-oh, fade to black chat. It seems we have come to an impasse. This picture has clearly captured the face of the murderer. However... Is this person the defendant or not? The defense is arguing that this person is not the defendant. Furthermore, as proof, this key has been submitted as evidence. Miss Von Karma. Oh, and this B. Oh, I timed that well with the fist slam. At this point in time, a verdict on the defendant's guilt is not possible. My perfect case. How is there a flaw in my perfect case? Don't think you've won yet, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I am a prodigy. I have never lost a case. And I don't intend to lose here in this courtroom to a fool like you. I don't care what I have to do. I will get my guilty verdict, she says, openly saying she's going to commit crimes in front of the entire courtroom. Bang. That's enough. If you would like to continue, do so in the lobby. Court will reconvene tomorrow at 10 a.m. That is all. Court is adjourned. Bang. June 21st, 1.32 p.m. Just a court. Defendant lobby, number three. Oh, wow. That was you, Pearly? You summoned my sis. Yes, I felt I had no choice. Great going, Pearly. I knew you were special. Hey, Nick, did you know? Um, yeah. It's not like anyone else in there could have done that. Hmm, Nick. 
know you're trying really hard and all, but I really don't remember ever leaving that room. Chat saying, you think someone smart enough to be labeled a prodigy would have a broad enough vocabulary to be able to call people something other than fools constantly? Well, sometimes she calls them foolish fools. And I don't think that a third person could have gone into that room. Yeah. Well, at least we have until tomorrow to figure things out. Like, what happened in that room, for instance? Yeah, I'm counting on you. Ah, uh, I envy the two of you. Oh, by the way, Nick, do you think you could take Pearly back home for me? Sure. All right, Pearls. You ready to go buy some tickets? Huh? A ticket? Poor thing. So sheltered. To be continued. Okay, Chad, I think this is a decent stopping point for now. So let's have a little conversation on how we feel about the case so far. Is that, I don't think I could reasonably wrap up the investigation in like an hour, especially if I'm voicing all the lines. So let's have a quick chat. So in terms of the case so far, we got introduced to a mechanic that I'm still kind of feeling whether I like it or not. Let's listen to some OST as we wait for a bit. And I think, uh, I think they realized that there were some kind of obtuse moments in the first game. And the way to remedy that is to clearly highlight them with the Cyclox system. It does become, I will say, unintentionally funny. And I'm sure there are a lot of images online where they, basically somebody just asks a question and then like 5 million locks pop up. But uh, we'll be seeing quite a bit of that mechanic, especially in the next session. And it will continue to be a thing throughout the second game. So expect a lot of that to pop up. I kind of like it from the sense of like a gameplay, gameplay standpoint where it combines what you're doing at trial. So that way there's like some, I guess, difficulty to clearing the investigation. So it gives them ways in which that it's not just like guess random things until plot progresses where it's going to force you to think a little bit. But I'll revisit this topic, I think, at the end of the game. I want to experience it again and give my final thoughts on it then. But I'm very curious what chat thinks about that mechanic. Unfortunately, we're going to be seeing uh, Pearls transform multiple times uh, throughout this particular game. It's not the last time we will see her transform, I think even in this trial. So as I said before, not a fan. I will try to not bring it up every single time, but I want chat to be very aware of my stance on it, where this is one of the things that made me not super comfortable with the game. And it just kind of put me off for like literally the rest of the playthrough. So I will try to power through it and try to look at some of the positives that the game is doing. I think from the standpoint of some of the characters, I like that they did the follow through with a lot of heart. So that way, if, there, if she was a quote unquote fan favorite, we get kind of like a update on the history. I like some of the investigation that isn't really relevant to the investigation itself. So what I mean by that is like we could check out the window to see the hotel. We could look at the poster in his office to get more like updates on what's there. Uh, I will say, unfortunately, I think it does go further. <laughs> I will state that not with her specifically, but with a different character, which is uh, really, really, really unfortunate and comes off as very creepy. So that that's a different trial, but it's also in this game. So you can imagine my face playing through the game where I'm like, maybe I could get through it. And then I'm like, oh, my gosh, they really did it again. I can't believe it. I'm so disappointed on so many levels. <laughs> And then to end with this game's last trial was like, oof, I did never, I actually did not ever complete this game. So this will be technically when we get to the final trial, it'll go to a purely blind playthrough as I did not bother finishing that final trial. The reasons will, I think, be self-evident and I will not spoil them. But needless to say, I was very frustrated with the game at that point uh, for different reasons, not specific to strikes or mistakes, 
as we went through the court system, but due to the plot, very much due to the plot, I was very frustrated. Um, I think from that standpoint, you know, I'm honestly trying to think what the other case was in this game, or if there's only four cases. If there's only four cases in this game, which I'll double check for next time. I don't consider that a spoiler. Chat wants to tell me there's four cases, there's four cases. But from that standpoint, I'm not very hopeful about it's only four. Oh, that's really unfortunate. <laughs> that is really unfortunate. OK, so yeah, I, I don't have positive news to tell you, chat. This is about as good as it's going to get then. <laughs> I feel like it's mostly downhill from here, but we'll try to we'll try to put a face on. We'll get through. We will do our best to solve the investigation phases as close to flawlessly as possible. I will try to use some reasoning and try to put myself in the shoes of Phoenix Wright where I have to think I'm really stupid and I need everything spelled out for me. So I will try to get into that mindset to not skip ahead with the evidence. And I will try very, very hard to not mess up some of the Cycloc stuff. But I think that might be a little easier than some of the trial stuff. Since I think where the trials can be a bit tricky is early on, you don't get any penalties for pressing, but in later cases you do. So it becomes kind of a weird kind of balance between, okay, I really need evidence, but which one of these will actually get me the evidence? And so you can rack up a game over a bit more easily as you go through. I don't think we'll game over in this playthrough, but we'll see. I, I, t TVD, I guess. But I think from that standpoint, um, I guess from the characters, I'm not super in love with all the new characters so far. I kind of like Morgan's design because her hair is ridiculous. I'm not really a fan of the Eeny Meeny Miny Mo reference character. I think Chad knows why. I'm not going to elaborate. <laughs> that that itself is self-evident. Um, but yeah, this is just one of those times where, you know, growing up with this game, when like, because I got it basically the, within a couple months that it came out, I was just like, I'm really struggling to the to feel that this is the US. And that struggle basically continues throughout the game, and it just gets absolutely incredulous at points. Morgan's a lot, especially the hair. Can't stand Meanie. Yeah, I was not a fan. I think where they have to kind of draw the line with some of the characters, and we'll we'll discuss this definitely for sure when we're comparing the cases, is there's a difference between a character being like a really good villain versus just being like painfully unlikable and wanting them to be the villain. And I think several characters kind of teeter on the edge <laughs> with some of that, where I feel like they are definitely meant to be very unlikable. And in some ways that will bias your opinion towards them in the trial, whether or not they are a culprit, where you just want terrible things to happen to them. I feel like there were a couple cases, or not cases, I feel like there were a couple people like that in the first game. Like, for example, I was absolutely not a fan of Meekins. I'm not a fan of the nerd guy, for example, in the first game, um, for, again, very obvious reasons. So unfortunately, I, I don't know if a character gimmick gets quite to that level of annoying, I would say maybe Mini gets a little close. She gets a little close with it. There are definitely worse characters in this series, and I think that's where it's kind of interesting, and I definitely want to hear Chat's opinion, especially over the course of the game, where we talk about things like, what makes a character very memorable? How many memorable characters are in this game compared to the first game? And unfairly, I will state, you know, the first game does have five cases, and the fifth case is a bonus case. But from the standpoint of, like, the core first four when we're comparing them, like, I'm very curious we'll chat, where chat will end up rating some of the characters and some of the cases. Because I do think this game has some of the weakest cases in general. But we'll see if chat agrees or not with that opinion. I will state that opinion early. But we'll see if the chat agrees with that by the end of the playthrough. And who knows, maybe there's maybe there's worse cases I haven't seen yet in the later games. And that, that will change my own personal rating scale when we get to some of those. But I think for now, chat, I mean, I guess they're trying something different. I'll, I'll give them props for tr trying to do like a sealed room murder, I guess. I mean, it's a, it's a step in the right direction to kind of ramp up the mystery angle a little bit. I think the problem is that uh, 
I will state for me personally, without going into details, they gave me one of the clues to solving it way too early, and I knew before first trial. That's all I'm going to say. So for people that I think they're really into mysteries, they're just kind of like, oh, come on. Like, you just roll your eyes. As soon as you see one specific thing, you're like, oh. You can put you can piece the entire story together. But for people that are not into the mysteries or for people that may or may not have seen it in some of the investigation phases, I think it can be somewhat neat with how it unrolls slash unveils itself. But I do think that some of the frustration with that comes into the sense is like if you do figure it out early, it is painful getting the character to come to that conclusion. And some of the words that they say were like, oh, this can't be that. And you're like, w but why? <laughs> no, there, there isn't a reason it can't not be that. Like, no. And you're just kind of like shaking Phoenix. I feel like this case and the last case in this game made me shake Phoenix a lot, where I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. I'm dying here, Phoenix. Why am I presenting evidence for this? But anyway, we'll get to that. We'll see if we get to that point or not with the chat. Or maybe that'll be my own standalone opinion. But anyway, I think we had a nice little conversation about Phoenix. I don't think I have anything else to do about it. Phoenix does his best, but sadly he's an idiot. Yeah, I, I, I think what this case also has a big problem with is... Uh, sadly, I actually like the police detective lady a lot more than Maya. She actually knew what was going on in the courtroom. <laughs> so I'm like, I could respect the confidence. And yeah, as I said before, it's not going to be different, but every time they do the spiritual possession with Mia in particular, even chat is like, is it any wonder Mia won't pass on? She knows she can't lawyer at all. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Like, it's just like, man, I just want to be able to say, like, I did it. And I feel like maybe some people aren't bothered by it, but for me, I get really bothered by it. I'm not a big fan of handholding in the game unless it's just to, like, understand mechanics or introduce something new. Like the psych lock, I don't care that the game has taken me through the tutorial. I need to understand how it works. And then from there, I don't need more handholding. I've, I've now done it once, I understand, we'll go forward. That's a mechanic. I don't like that we are having Mia bail us out like every case. It's so sad. It's so sad, chat. Maybe one day he'll step up and be a real lawyer, which is ironic given I think I know what happens to him between the third game and Apollo Justice, but I guess that's where it goes. So we'll see how the chat feels. I'll also double check, I think, where some of the spinoffs sit. They could be worth checking. Honestly, I've never played any of them except for, I think it was called Investigations. I played the first Investigation theme. I think where some of the issue might come into play, especially with some of those spinoffs, is that some of the characters are not as, like, wacky or as memorable. And I feel like sometimes we'll see elements of things like there's a lot of show, or there's a lot of tell, but don't show kind of elements in it and that can put some people off so i don't i can't really speak to the quality of the other games but we'll go through there yeah some are a bit more subdued some aren't some are very out there so it's it's more of a kind of kind of like a pendulum it could swing either way on it so yeah so some people will not like certain games because they're not quite as wacky but honestly, I, to be honest with you, if the wacky goes too far in one direction, I'm not a fan of it. But again, that, that one's purely personal opinion. Maybe chat likes it when they go really off the wall wacky. For me, I just find it distracting at points, if all they are is like a character gimmick. I kind of have that problem with things in Fire Emblem too. Like, if the character is only defined by their gimmick, I start to really dislike the character very quickly. So like if they start having like a million uses of one catchphrase or they do something that I find physically annoying, like the microphone screeches, like make me actually like tighten my fist when I hear it from Meekins and I don't find it endearing at all. Um, those are just really exhausting. So having like a lot of, as Chad is saying, one note characters, it's like, oh, I know you're trying to be memorable and I get you're trying to put, push the quirk, but I, I need, I need something else with the character to make me care about the character. And I think by revisiting some of these characters across different cases, it does give them an opportunity to flesh them out a little bit and maybe go through some character progression. So I'm also very curious when we're done with this trial and done with some of the other trials, if we feel like there is a character in particular you like the arcs of. So I want to revisit this topic. I'm going to put it in your mind now to think about for later, because uh, we will be discussing this, I think, in a couple sessions. But anyway, chat, I think that's all for now. We went on a little bit of a ramble tangent. So with that, I'm going to say, 
I think it's time to say goodbye to YouTube. So hopefully you enjoyed up to this point in the game. I'm sorry they decided to age up Pearl, I guess. But hopefully see you again next time.